How is everybody doing? Wrangling all those goats can't be easy. The legend, dupe face. I appreciate that. I guess I don't have chat box on this one. No, wait. Hey, trans girl Jade. Hello, Jackie Sins. Oh, Patrick Dune, perfect timing then. I'm gonna make sure I have my music on because it's gonna be probably just a good chill stream, I feel. Oh yeah, we. I was gonna talk about because I I didn't know. So I wanted this, and we're we're still waiting for people to to come in a little bit. But I wanted this to be like a. Um, like just a, kind of retrospective is the right word, but um, yeah, retrospective on CPAC, but also a. Uh, word I'm looking for. A Q&A now that I've hit 75,000 this is just wild to think about. 75,000 um, followers on YouTube. Still only at three on Twitch so if you if you follow on Twitch be sure to share. Thank you, Soda Account. Yeah, I've heard of the New Mutants. The comic or the, the movie? <laughs> Merc John, thank you very much. Eccentric Gentleman, thank you for subscribing with Prime. I appreciate it very much. The Raider Gaming, Jordan, I love your CPAC videos. You did an outstanding job. Thank you. That you picked my dead name as your alias had me, LFA, LMFAL. Uh, thank you for popping off with the goats in chat. Yeah, dead domain. I uh, dead domain. Yeah, no, I I didn't see Walter. So here's the thing: I didn't recognize Walter. Um, I did see him though on the show floor, and somebody else had pointed it out. But if you go back through the first video, you can see him in one of my pieces of footage when he was um, interviewing the young Republican that's in his video. I walked by and was recording them, and I actually. I should go back through with audio and see if I can pick that up because I, I just cut out all the audio from the videos when I was editing. So I might be able to go and see what he actually did. Carolyn was Necky or was Nesky. I will actually, I'll include this as my first Q&A question. What are you doing for self-care? Watching your CPAC video was a lot as a cis woman. I can't imagine what it was like as a trans woman for four whole days plus editing. Well, so right after the first video I got sick which I, I was dealing with being sick for like four days um and that put off the second video by a couple days because I like whatever cold hit me it wasn't COVID um but I'm sure it was a mix of like convention gunk and then just like whatever else happened to have hit me um I'm gonna turn off the 
Why? Hmm. I don't have. Why is that? Oh, there we go. Okay. Turn that off. Um. And so being able to like come home and relax a little bit was nice. But essentially, once I got home from CPAC, I just literally jumped right into editing. And so there, there wasn't like a refractory period, so to speak, between me getting home. The four days I spent there... Not, not even talking about the, the week leading up to it where I was preparing scripts um, so I wouldn't have to write everything when I got back. Where I was recording the stuff before I left. And then getting back was like another almost, almost a full week of work to get the next video out. And then, you know, another week after that. So I've been not sleeping great and not eating great, but I have been yesterday after the premiere, of course, I did take kind of the rest of the day off, and today has been a likewise, I had my facial electrolysis today, um, but today has been likewise a very kind of just chill, more relaxed day. Um, Dragos Ardelian, tell us more about your convo with Michael Knowles. My conversation with Michael Knowles was literally everything you see in the video is all the words I said to him because he was very popular and he was on his way from several. So if you look at the video, there is the media gallery, which was essentially just like all the podcasts and radio shows and everything. And he had back to back to back appearances at those. And in between, I, I kind of forced myself into a group of college Republicans that were trying to get like pictures with him and stuff and so it was literally like his handler i had to wheel and deal with michael knowles's handler because he was telling me like oh you you know like michael's got to be he's going on stage next and you've got to like hurry up and i was like okay just like really quick like literally the question i want to ask him it will take less than a minute and the handler was you know for for being michael knowles's handler was very nice he was like uh yeah okay just be, like be quick about it and i was like yes and so literally Everything that happened with Michael Knowles was me pulling out my phone to record, making sure we were both in frame, and then asking him about Matt Walsh. Oh yeah, and there were there were no masks. There were no masks. Oh, happy birthday, Oliver. Did I receive Galvanic? I don't believe so. No, I've been, they, they have these different machines um, and they do, so the thing I think that really helps preventing like redness and scarring is they do, um, God, what's it called? Phos, no, something phoresis, cataphoresis. Um, which is like a very tingly thing that kind of closes the pores back up after they've been zapped. And I think that really helps with the redness. Um, and then I also have, I, I drink tons and tons of water. Watch it, Maxi the Cat, watch New Mutants for the Lesbian subplot. I've been meaning to watch it. It's on my, it's on my eventual weekend watch list. Maybe I'll do that this weekend. Shy Kildray, how do you keep yourself safe online, both at CPAC and in general? Um, Two-factor authentic authentication is, is the best thing I can say. I don't use my real name for almost anything, so I'm not, like, super easy to track down in the way that I, you know, and, and but here's the thing is that some other content creators are. At the end of the day, if somebody wants to find your real name, they probably can. And from there... It's a lot of stuff, like, from there, it probably isn't too hard to find your address. Unless you are, you know, rich and wealthy enough to hire somebody to go through and hide all that shit for you. What? But I would say, like, the thing that I don't necessarily worry about 
is I don't I don't have to worry about necessarily like it's you know nothing is secure forever, but when it comes to the things that would actually like fuck up somebody's life like money, um, finances, bills, subscriptions, all that shit, like that is that needs to be more secure. So I always I use two factor authentication on everything. Like that's that's the way to do it. Two factor authentication and then don't use the same passwords. Like make new passwords, keep them somewhere safe so that nobody can guess them. It's I know it's a pain in the ass, but I would recommend using like when Apple passwords comes up with their password feature because it's it's usually just random letters and numbers and guess what? That's a good fucking password. You can't you can't guess that shit. The eccentric gentleman, I found your content after your hate church videos and I'm curious, do you have a backup plan ever if your cover is blown? I haven't been in any places where I think like as violent as the rhetoric was at the hate church, and I'm sorry, you can probably hear my chair squeaking. As violent as the rhetoric was at the hate church, I don't think that they would have resorted to violence as a first tactic if they had found me out. So I think like if if I had somehow been sussed out, they probably would have asked me to leave. Like like maybe forcefully, maybe under threat of violence, but at that point I probably I would have just left. Because then you get into a legal gray area where they are telling you you are not wanted on private property, so you are then trespassing. And there is, when when that becomes an issue, there are any number of ways legally that situation could go, and I'm not I'm not going to fuck with that. Um, at CPAC, CPAC is different because that is on. It's not public, but it is CPAC ground. So, like, while CPAC is an event, there are there were other conventions that were held there. Um, and, like, when I talked to Amanda Moore, who also got kicked out, um, and you can see it at the end of the CPAC part two, is Amanda got kicked out. She got her pass completely taken away, even though she had bought it and paid for it, like Match Lab said. And she spent most of that that week just chilling in the lobby of the Gaylord because she couldn't go into any of the events because she didn't have her pass, but she like they couldn't kick her out of the hotel. So that, that would have been different. Had I been sussed out from CPAC, honestly, I don't know. Because um, I had, that, that scared the shit out of me because when I, in the first video, I went through the process of um, you know, what it was like picking up my badge. And when I knew that they needed, or when I found out that they wanted my actual ID and that my actual ID would not match the name and information I had registered with, that scared the hell out of me because I had already flown like literally across the country, Washington to Washington. I had spent so much money on the CPAC tickets that were non-refundable at that point, on the Reagan dinner, on the Airbnb, like everything. So like I had a massive pit in my stomach the whole way there. Um, and then it turns out that they just don't have great like OPSEC, so th they didn't really care. Um, but it was like, I, I don't know what I would have done. <laughs> like I couldn't just leave. I, I don't know. I probably would have tried to get in good with the, the Nazis. Uh, well, because they were they were wandering around the entire hotel, not just CPAC. Like, they were mostly just there to be weird antagonistic douches. And so I probably would have done what Amanda did and tried to, like, infiltrate their ranks and see what was up with them. Um, and it would have been a drastically different piece. Drastically different piece. Yeah, uh, Misha DeCalloway, the Reagan dinner was that sad $500. Thank you very much, Sean, for $20. Can't stay. I had to stop in and say you're literally the best, and the CPAC videos are excellent. Thank you so much. I'm going to go get some water real quick because I am getting a headache already, and I'll be right back. Yes, hello, darling.
Okay. Yeah, sorry. I was out with one of my partners last night. Had maybe a little bit too much to drink in celebration. Hello, dog. Dog says hello. Puppet. Hello. Hello. Uh, Jordan Thompson, do I ever stop LARPing? When I was at CPAC? No. Because here's the thing. I would have loved to. My, my original plan, I talked about it in the first video a little bit. My original plan with CPAC was to go and every day, and this was ambitious beyond belief, um, just considering how big those days ended up being, but was to go take my notes for the day and then come home, write a script and record it. That way it was fresh every day. That went out the window when my roommate, or I guess kind of housemate, was also going to CPAC. And he's, he's Mark, he's the guy I talked to um, in, the, in the video during the car rides, is that like, I can't, I can't talk about how bullshit everything is when I, I have a, a literal, like a CPAC attendee, like sleeping in the room next to me. So yeah, I had to be, the only times I wasn't in character were when I was like alone in my room because I had to be in character even outside of that because the person I was sharing a house with was also going to the event, which is a, it's such a bummer. <clears throat> the virus, a lot of people, a lot, the virus, sorry. Um, a lot of people have pointed out that Boba, and which I am a, if you, if you can't tell, I'm a Boba fiend. Um, we're pointing out that that might have sussed me out. I don't think so. I think I think Boba is enough. Here's the thing. I think there are enough conservative men who are into like fruity, refreshing beverages that would be served at Starbucks that I don't think it would turn that many heads. Um, and and certainly not enough to like suss me out as like a liberal. Um, Nico Meku, one, two, three, four. How would you feel about someone like Hassan reacting to your videos? I would be super thrilled if Hassan reacted to one of my videos. Hassan is one of the biggest streamers on the planet. Like what? I would be fucking jazzed if like an audience in the, in the what, millions saw my stuff. That would be, that would be really fucking cool. Um... Zachary Butler, thank you for the $10. Was there anyone you met or talked to at CPAC who seemed reasonable, apart from their utterly bonkers fascist political beliefs, or are they all just openly off the deep end? I think the nicest person I met was Maga Hammock's lady. And I, I, I kind of talk about it in the video, but like she seemed just like a genuinely a very sweet old lady who just seemed misguided. Um, like I, I don't think... Uh, Zachary Butler, yes, yeah, I just read that one. Aaron, yeah, like, that. that's kind of the only person that I shot. Because I, I almost recorded, and I wasn't able to record the couple that was sitting next to me during the Trump speech because it was so, like, loud in there that, like, it, I, I tried recording my conversation with them where they talked about, you know, my generation being the the ones to stop everybody from becoming slaves and that stuff but they did not um the audio did not come out like at all you couldn't hear them because it was so loud in there uh recrimi thank you very much for subscribing at tier one kobold question did you get everything you wanted into your cpac videos was there something you left on the cutting room floor you would have liked to include um so that's the thing is that I didn't ex like like the things I expected from CPAC kind of happened like weird bullshit talking points and like the the things that I had planned for like being able to go through um, the talks for the day and debunk their talking points and um, talk about who these people are and why they have such an interest both financially or religiously or you know theologically whatever why they have such an interest in advancing this Christian nationalist platform. And what are you doing, dog? Okay, my dog wants food real quick. I'll be right back. Oh, yeah, there you go. Good girl. 
Um, like that was that was the stuff I expected to happen, you know. But I didn't expect pretty much everything else. Like the uh, the bling lady, who I don't think I managed to actually get it on video. Why I call her bling is that she called herself that. She she said like, yeah, everybody calls me bling because of my outfit. Um, cause I was, that was how I first approached her. It was like, Hey, I would love to interview you for my podcast to see you have your own clothes and everything. Um, yeah. So like that kind of stuff. And that, that was all the stuff that as it was happening, as the stuff with Saif Khan and bling and the like whistleblower lady, as all that was happening, I was like, okay, this is going in the video because it's the stuff that I, ca I couldn't have planned for. You know, it's, it's the weird stuff that I just, I couldn't have possibly known was going to happen. And between Friday and Saturday, there was so much of it. And the, the, the challenge in the moment was getting it all recorded. Because things like the dance circle to Suspicious Minds and things like memory from cats playing like it, it's just it's these weird little touches that it was it was so strange and i i constantly had my phone out um because like literally i had to i had to get that was that was one of the biggest pains in the asses uh so the first day i was there my phone was like you are using the camera for three hours at a time i'm just gonna die and so i went down and I bought a phone, not a phone, just like a, a battery pack. And battery pack, all well and good. But the cord, it didn't come with a cord. So I had to go across the street from the hotel to a Rite Aid to get a cord. And then after a day or so, on the day of the Trump speech, the cord just died. Like the cord just stopped working. So I had to go find and buy another cord. And so it was just like this constantly revolving door of like, not knowing, okay, is the battery pack not working? Is the cord not working? Am I going to be able to charge my phone? How much should I keep using my phone? I need to get footage for this, but I don't want it to die. So that was a real, um, that was a real pain in the ass to like try and try and balance. Um, Ian Crown, thank you for super chatting five dollars. Love your videos, DD. One question: What's your favorite sport? Coley, Coley ball. Um, yeah, Coley ball. Big fan, big fan of the three virtues. Unity, Duty, Destiny. Big ups. Uh, Astrocore, thank you for 10 bits. Do you have any techniques for staying in character full time, even little things like facial reactions? In my experience, that's hard enough when cornered at like a bus stop or with customers, let alone non-stop hours on end. It's interesting you bring that up because that might be... I think the... Like, because a lot of people have asked me, like, oh my gosh, you're such a good actor. And, like, I've I've done acting. Like, I've acted on stage and stuff before. And I've done comedy, which is, you know, a lot like acting in a lot of ways. But I think keeping a straight face, it comes down to years and years of customer service experience. Like, if, like really. Um, where it doesn't matter how busy it is. It doesn't matter how shit of a day you're having. It doesn't matter how bad everything is you need to get them tips to survive. You need to put on a happy face and make it work. And so I think that is largely the kind of mindset that I was that I was reacting with. Is like I am like and and that's the other thing is like there there was a lot of pressure and I already mentioned it, but there was a lot of pressure on me there because I had already traveled literally across the country. It's it's the reason why cuz I I debated like a month before I did this, I was like, do I really want to spend $500 on the Reagan dinner? Because that, that was, I, I couldn't put that on credit. That had to be directly from a card. I was like, that's $500 right now. $500 in my money, that's just like gone. And it, I kept coming back to, mentally, I kept coming back to, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to go all the way. If I'm going to do it, I need to commit to the bit. You know, like I, I can't just go as like and, and Walter Masterson does a different thing. Like it, he, he is much more satirical. He is much more um, loose and he goes to a lot more of these events. I don't I don't have that kind of I don't have those resources. I don't have that ability. So 
that that played a big part in keeping a straight face too is that if i'm going to do this thing if i'm going to travel thousands of miles across the country spend thousands of dollars to attend this event with no guarantee that it will pay off and i, th I think with ad revenue and everything i think fingers crossed it, it probably will i will at least i think make back my money um like i i need to commit to this like i i can't i can't half-ass it i can't treat it like a joke like i need to go to this with journalistic intent and that was um like that that was every time i had an interview and i like every every time i went into an interview i knew full well they could say some bonker shit and they did repeatedly but i needed to be like no, this is like this is the job right now. Um, King Kill, Hazard Pay for Your Work. Thank you so much. It's been super insightful. If you could talk with one of the attendees out of character safely, what would you want to say? Ask. I would want to talk to the um, the MAGA mother. Give me one second. I'm gonna turn the heat down in here because it's getting a little hot. Okay. I would want to talk to Bling because, and, and people have noted this, that it felt like, I, I, I debated how much of that conversation to include. And I decided to include the whole thing because again, I wanted to portray what it was like being there, what it was like talking to the people there, what the people there were like. And this was, this was not somebody I knew. This is not somebody that I had, I had seen or heard about previously or like, oh my gosh, this is a crazy MAGA lady. I had no idea except for her shirt. And people, some people have criticized me in the comments and I, I take this stuff very seriously when somebody says like, I don't think it was fair of you to like give her false hope like that or, or try to talk to her in in you know those kind of christian terms and i i definitely see where they're coming from but i couldn't again i couldn't like like what what else am i supposed to say at that point other than to be rude and just be like oh yeah you're crazy lady and just walk away um but yeah orc dork she seems so desperate for human contact but was too far down the rabbit hole i really like i out of context out of everything else i would really love to just be able to sit her down and be and try and explain to her why her kids have separated from her and how she could actually tangibly take steps to change that um but yeah like that's you know i'm um, sorry we're i need to catch up on these super chats uh thank you so much cunty bear <laughs> for ten dollars jeremy canned thank you for ten dollars again were you very cognizant of changing your body language and speech mannerisms yes to be more cis male passing despite growing up as a girl i wouldn't know where to begin in order to pass as a cis woman yeah um it's all very it was all very overcompensating like like and and i think part of that is the caricature of like the character i was trying to create in Keith, who was always intended to be kind of um, like insecure in certain ways, but that is also a over exaggeration to sell aspects of myself. Like a lot of people have said, is like my face is a lot more feminine now. My form, my figure is a lot more feminine now. So going into that, I needed to like stand more rigid i needed to like be more tense with my muscles and my my stature to kind of sell the the illusion um so yeah there was there was definitely a lot of um cognizance to that astro core thank you for 10 bits most of my customer service experience is customer satisfaction stuff where i can just blue screen while they yell a little actual engagement needed now i've worked i've worked several several years in um retail and I worked several, several years as a uh, food server, bartender, host. Like, so I've, I've kind of done it all. Ugh. Yeah, Mark, Marco Dotto, um, have you heard about the situation with Sweet Baby Inc.? I have. I am, I am waiting for it to gestate into something bigger, which I'm sure it will soon, um, before I do anything with it. But I will cover it at some point because it's just so dumb. But meanwhile... I, I think everybody should go and check out um, Savvy Wright's book's latest video because she did a phenomenal 
just like it's six hours it's a massive deep dive into the history of gamergate um and so if if you are not up to date on it or you aren't sure of what gamergate is or what people are talking about with sweet baby inc go check out savvy rights books latest video because it is like if you like my research work you will you will love it it's a phenomenally just edited every like incredible work um Ian Crown, thank you very much for five dollars. Did almost anyone recognize you? I don't think so. Like, I I don't think I'm famous enough, even in left wing spaces. Like I I have been recognized in public before from the channel, um, which is very weird because it wasn't even in my hometown. It was in Seattle, um, but I don't I don't think so. No, I I'm and certainly not among like conservatives. Um, oh my goodness, Jackie Sins, thank you so much for fifty dollars. I hope I'm not getting this wrong, but you're non-bi, right? Uh, when I started discovering myself, I identified as just femme, but necessarily a woman yet. I know it's personal, but I support and respect everyone's race. Yeah, I'm non-binary. Um, Jonathan, thank you for $10. Did you meet any other podcasters? Did anyone say they would listen to your podcast? Yes. And I, okay, so that's actually one thing I did cut. Um, is there was, and I, I cut it just because it was a little too similar to something else that already happened. And it, I think it was just, it was one too many things in close succession. And the video I knew was already going to be over two hours. Um, but I cut at some point. So after I would, I got done interviewing Lady Maga, after I got done interviewing the Maga drag queen, a somewhat older woman, like just wanted to come interview me for her podcast. She said she had a podcast. And she just asked me three questions. And that was that was her she her podcast had a shtick where her her entire thing was she asked three questions, and um, just got three simple answers and like just kind of took the temperature of of groups like that I guess. Um, and the questions were, what do you think of where the country is right now? where do you want it to be and how should it get there and of course these were these were more like leading questions to allow somebody to pontificate about their you know opinions on biden and the economy and all that stuff so um but yeah that that was the uh um that was the thing there oh my god josh bowdish Holy shit, thank you so much. Let me see, why isn't chat up on the screen? Sorry, I am... Uh, thank you so much for... Um... The... $500, oh my god. Oh, uh, Patrick Dune, are you in here? What's your name? Are you a boy or girl? What starter do you want? Thank you. Oh my God. Josh gets a Reagan dinner. Thank you. Oh my God, Josh. Um, let me, sorry, I need to ban somebody real quick again. I'm just, I'm curious really quick, Sir Lightning, why you, like, you keep creating new accounts just to come in here and spam stuff that like, you do know it doesn't like offend me, right? Um, like I, I ban you because it's more annoying for everybody else if I don't. Like, it is, like, you can't, like, do you, do you not have, like, seriously, nothing better to do with your time? That's, I don't, yeah, my God, Josh, thank you so much. Holy crap. Uh, no, Johnny Viral, uh, thank you very much for $5. Curious, did you get a call back from that guy with the UK flag on his profile? No, I did not. Um, 
no, I, I highly doubt he will, he will see the video. Yeah, sorry, Logan, I was having the, I was playing the stream through my phone to, um, to, uh, ban Sir Lightning, but Patrick got him. Um, yeah, the Reagan dinner was so... Like, I I expected at least great food, you know? Like, I, I expected at least great food. And if, if, you know, a little bit middling, and it was, it was just middling. Like, I, I was telling one of my partners that if I had paid $100 for that meal, I would have been pissed. Like, if I'd gone to a restaurant and it was supposed to be a nice, ritzy place, and I had paid $100 for that, I would have been pissed and it wasn't somebody asked uh the eccentric gentleman how do you fuck up a salad though it wasn't the salad that was the problem the salad was fine it had you know it had fresh vegetables it was i mean like it was a salad salads are hard to fuck up um it was the just like incredibly small portions and then just the meat being like every like when the food came out it was cold it was it was fucking cold <laughs> and the greens which like I got I got basically one sprig of like I think it was supposed to be steamed like asparagus it was still hard like like barely cooked um the meat came in a little there was a fillet that was the way it was cooked and seared like the the flavoring and the like the taste of the um like the spices they used was fine but it was still cold or, or no, that one was lukewarm. The salmon was pretty cold. And then what else? It, there was like a potatoes au gratin. That was like, okay. And then the wine, I looked it up. The wine was like from a $40 bottle. And I, I got two glasses and they stopped serving people. And they did, they did the old person thing where they started serving coffee as like dessert. And I'm like... Like, what the hell? Are you ever going to go to the soda fountain afterwards? Like, good God. Um, yeah, no, it was really just... Like, I was... I was... I was really fucking mad. I was really fucking mad um, walking out of there. But I was like, at the time... I think I even... I was venting to my partners. Or no, they were asleep. Are they asleep? Because it's three hours ahead. Yeah, okay, so it's three hours ahead that way. So they were not asleep yet. Um, but I just wanted to go home and go go to sleep. Like, I was so mad. Um, thank you so much. Oh my goodness, Black Flag, thank you very much. Um, great work. I appreciate it. Thank you for the nine ninety nine. Ashley Lehman, thank you for super chatting a dollar ninety nine. Uh, Ring Banana, thank you. Rock Throw Dogs. I know. We'll, we will talk about that. Uh, I don't know if we'll get to it today. Like we'll we'll see. Um, but I, yeah, I, I do want to go over that at some point. Um, Zachary Butler, thank you for the five dollars. I like your nails, by the way. I'm a drastically more mask presenting gender fluid dude myself, but you're absolutely aesthetic goals in some ways. Thank you. I um, I, I decided to try, I have five different nail colors right now, and I decided to try implementing one that I just need to throw out because it's cheap, and once the air hit it, it does not, it, it just gets super goopy, and so all my other, all of my other nails are like very smooth, they turned out great, but then these two middle-ish fingers are just, you can't see it on camera, but they're just fucked up, uh, and I hate it. Have more money than I thought. Have another five. We'll be sending more. Thank you very much, Brutus. No, nobody. You, by the way, this this isn't a Q and A where you just pay. To, I, I want to make that clear. You don't have to pay for me to answer questions. Um, I will just answer questions. So, so I don't. I if if you like, don't worry about paying. If you just want to show up and support. Um, I have a new respect for you after going undercover. I've snuck into small conservative events, but I look like Zanky from Street Fighter, so I'm not at risk. Um. Thank you guys very much. How does Grinder work when someone is not a traditional gay man? Is there other options? Yeah, I mean you can list your um, 
So when you go on Grinder, you can list what category or click you fall under, what genre. Um, and so, you know, there's, I don't know, the only ones I ever look at are Twink and Trans um, because there's, there's a lot of overlap there, but then it's, there's Otter, Down Low, Bear, Rugged, uh, Daddy, Leather is one of them. Like, uh, it's, it's for like every variety of masculinity, question mark. Um, Grinders kind of playing it fast and loose a little bit, but it is, I mean, it's a queer dating app. Um, like I've seen on Grinder, like there, there are plenty of times that you can go on Grinder and see somebody like a straight, straight couple looking for another dude. Like, and it'll, it'll usually, be, here's the thing, it'll usually be the woman's photo on it, and I've had times where the woman will even reach out to me. I, I had one that I posted, I completely forgot about this, but I posted it on Facebook last year, and Facebook just reminded me, but it was, um, it was a woman reaching out to me on Grindr, completely unsolicited, and they said, my husband is having you tonight if you're down. And I'm, I, I didn't even respond. I was like, Jesus Christ, that is, th that's bold. Um, which is the, that's the the way Grinder works. Uh, Logan MC, thank you for super chatting a dollar ninety nine. Ha, Schumers, Grinder just recently added side positions, so it's not just top and bottom heteronormative anymore. Um, the tags are still lacking, but I was able to set my profile to male and they, them at once. Yeah, you can, I mean, you can still do, you can do non-binary, you can do, like, there, there is a, a decent amount of customization there. Um, so there's, like, plenty of, like, people that would fall outside of cis passing or, um, DL. Like, there's, there's a lot of variety on Grinder. Otter, I think, is between a twink and a bear. I myself am not entirely sure, but I think it is. It is like maybe a little bit older, maybe not not as like big and burly as a bear, um, but like more of just like a, a medium size, like maybe a little bit hairy, because twinks have more of a, a like like thin, lithe, fairly hairless. Uh, thing. What I think about the Bionicle revival from years back, I think it's a bummer. I think it's a... The reboot was such a misguided thing. Um, I have strong feelings on it because it... I think the designs themselves were okay, except I didn't like the, the, the like, applications that were on the actual, like, Toa armor because I think they just... The art didn't look good. It made them look too much like Hero Factory... You know what it made him look like? It actually made him look more like um, Robo Riders or Slicers, like which was which was never really the the Bionicle aesthetic. Um, so I think that was a, a mess up, and I think the story just didn't have. I I think whoever was in charge of the reboot underestimated how much investment people had in the Bionicle like narrative and the lore and how much that meant to people. And I think it was, so the, the first problem with the Bionicle reboot was they didn't take the story anywhere near as seriously. Um, not that it's like high art or anything, but they like, the story for the reboot was just like the most generic, the most generic, like vaguely elemental fantasy problem. And it was just... The other problem with the reboot, and here's the thing, is they if they if Lego did a Bionicle line, a series of Bionicle toys, this year, it would do ten times better. Because what they did was, um, they released it in 2015. They released it only four years after the first Bionicle line ended. So what they didn't have was they didn't have a long enough time to separate the two where there was an entirely new generation of kids who had never heard of Bionicle that would get into it, which they wouldn't because the story sucks. But they also didn't have enough separation where the kids who grew up with Bionicle 
were now primarily adults with expendable income. They were getting into collecting and stuff. And I think in a post-pandemic world where a lot of people have reconnected with toy collecting, um, a lot of people like myself, a lot of adults who have, you know, not even have a lot of expendable income, but they've gone back to their old toys. Like that's how I got started. I went back and I started restoring my old sets, restoring my old Bionicles. So I, I, yeah, the Bionicle reboot is something I have a lot of, um, a lot of feelings on. Uh, Frank Locke has super chat $5. It was really trippy to see that I've been to the CPAC location just after this past Christmas with my sis. You got more guts than me for sure. Well, I appreciate that. And I, um, yeah, I think, uh, so many people have brought up that KatsuCon is apparently at that same location, which is very funny to me. Uh, Nikki DeFox, $5. Thank you very much. Honestly, I don't know how you could listen to people preach about eliminating you from society and there are politicians who could be in power. Uh, I mean, in, in many ways, it's actually not too different from just doing that here. Like just listening to, like I've heard that rhetoric before for the most part. Like there, there are certain things, like there is a difference in the way it feels to be in a room when somebody says that shit and then to be surrounded. And that was, that was another thing. Cause some people were like, well, why didn't you just, and aside from the interviews, like, why didn't you just stay home and watch it from there? Why'd you pay all this money? And I think one of the most important parts of that was a, being able to see like the vendor hall, being able to get a feel for the atmosphere of the place. And that includes being able to be in a room, be in a crowd when somebody says, you know, we need to eliminate transgenderism from society. And the room erupts into applause. Cause that is, that's like, that's a different feeling. And when you watch the CPAC streams, it doesn't come across at all because the CPAC streams, the audio is piped directly into the mic. So you will hear cheers and it might pan out a little bit to the crowd, but it does not come across how fervently, how into the rhetoric and what rhetoric specifically the crowd is into unless i you know were to have that camera in the crowd um do i think i'll be able to get into cpac again probably not <laughs> probably not honestly um did going to cpac shy killjoy on twitch did going to cpac increase your motivation to do the work you do <sighs> Um, in some ways I would say yes, but any, any of these big projects I've done, like I would, I would count this as like one of five, like really big, intensely invested projects I've done. And the other one was right before this. Um, and I would say those projects are the first hate church video I did, uh, the Matt Walsh videos because those were another like just massive effort where I was putting in like five to six hour days of just listening to Matt Walsh. Um, the Spider-Man video, which underperformed, go, go watch that video if you haven't yet. And then the anti-Semitism video and this, and like those are my big like research topics. And after every one, I have a period of like, brief i don't want to call it burnout because it doesn't come necessarily with depression but it's just like i do need a reset period um but i haven't lost like after after all of the horrendous shit i've looked through all of the stuff all the research i've done i still haven't lost the inspiration to continue finding new things to cover but also just the want to bring information to people um so no, I, I don't think it's dissuaded me in any way. How was Bukele received at CPAC? V very well. Like I, I didn't show it. I did watch some of it later, but I didn't want to break it all down because again, the vi I only wanted to really cover what I was there for. Because again, I wanted to give that, I wanted to give a first person experience, so to speak. Um, and so I didn't cover literally every talk at CPAC, just the ones I was there for. Um, but yeah, no, the, my, my roommate loved him and mentioned him. You can see in, in the first video, he mentions really loving that guy. 
Jason Thompson, goodness gracious, thank you very much for super chatting 50. How do you do all this research and work on these hate groups and not get depressed? I do. Um, I think, and I, I talked about this a little bit after the anti-Semitism video, because that was that was the rough one for me. That was that was the one. Like I had looked through so much hate and so much like negativity and like like the the Spider-Man video. All of the research for that was like Gamergate shit. You know, the Matt Walsh video. All of the research for that is just blatant transphobia, blatant racism. But the anti-Semitism one was really fucking hard because that necessitated me finding, and I I talk about it in the video, but like going through multiple hours of footage from Holocaust camps and then proceeding to do research and during editing dozens upon dozens of hours of Holocaust denialism and and linking it all the way through to today and modern Holocaust deniers and these anti-Semites who are getting more of a platform online. And that shit like that is very depressing to see that proliferating online in spaces like Twitter and seeing rich billionaire assholes abetting it um, to stroke their own egos. Like that stuff, that does get depressing. Um, and then, you know, this was a different kind of depressing. Uh, why is my... What the dog doing? The dog is doing a heckin' woof. Um, I don't know where my... Yeah, the chat is frozen for me on my end, which sucks. Oh my goodness, thank you very much, Jonathan, for super chatting 25. Subscribe, you fools. Yes, please do subscribe. Okay, never mind, it's back. Um, but yeah, no, I, I don't... Taking time off and taking time to myself and reminding myself that there are good things, like my, my animals have been very helpful to me and supporting me, and like my animals are very nice and sweet and empathetic and they come cuddle me. Um, I have two incredibly loving, wonderful partners who were there to support me the entire time, who, who wanted, you know, constant updates on my, um, on my safety and they wanted to know how it was going. And like, so I think a lot of it comes down to surrounding yourself. Dog, dog, I don't have anything for you. I don't have nothing for you. I love you. I think a lot of it comes down to surrounding yourself with things that remind you it's not all bad because especially in online places, especially in like the places that I'm always on, like, like I'm on Twitter multiple hours a day. Um, and I probably, honestly, I probably shouldn't be. I'm really trying to curb that and cut back. But even aside from that, like there are healthier ways to spend your time and mental energy while still acknowledging. And my mom, my mom doesn't do this. My mom is the polar opposite, right? Where my mom basically has shut out most news because, and I think it's, I think it's part of the fact that she does, that she is coming into realizing later in life that the conservatism that she grew up with is not the same one of today. And she is, is reaching this point of cognitive dissonance and the only way she can react, and this is my personal belief just from observing her, the only way she can react is to shut it all out. To be like, okay, well, Democrats and Republicans are bad and I just don't need politics. And that's a very privileged stance to take because like, you know, I, I covered a little bit in the video, but like some people can do that because the politics don't actually affect them. I can't do that. I'm a trans person. Like I don't get to, I don't get to have that luxury. Um, but at the same time, like you don't have to, it is, it is a conscious choice to allow yourself to be overwhelmed with the bad, to doom scroll and to only think of the bad things. And, um, yeah, I, my my advice if you don't if you want to do this kind of thing and not get depressed is to take breaks. And I I realize that I have a higher threshold for this shit than a lot of other people, like a lot of other people. Um, 
Like I, you know, we've we've done we've done multiple hour streams. We did as soon as I got back from CPAC, we did a like three hour stream on Next Benedict's and Aaron Bushnell's emulation. Like that's heavy shit. And that was that was rough for me to do. But like some people, you know, I have I have people in the chat, and you know, no no, uh, I don't mean to say this to diss anybody, but like some people will get got halfway through the next thing and we're like, I gotta go, I can't handle this, and that's fine. Like some people are are built differently. Like they they are not made for that. And you know, I I think there is something broken in my brain in the same way that there are specific ways that you know doctors have their brains broken or you know certain lawyers have their brains broken where it's just they are able to put aside or or waylay certain aspects of how things affect them psychologically and just focus on the task at hand and that's kind of what I I don't know that's kind of what I do Nikki DeFox thank you very much for super chatting two dollars it terrified me should I be is it okay do I run um don't run yet I had somebody. I had somebody say. Somebody asked a question earlier. Five dollars from Nikki to Fox. Uh, if the worst happens and Trump does come to power, should I flee, revolt? I'm legitimately kind of scared of this stuff going on. I talked about it on the stream the other day when we were playing uh, Modern Warfare, but I think the best thing you can do right now is be prepared. And that's going to look different for different people. But I highly recommend that trans people get into... Um, and again, this is not advocating anything more than knowing how to defend yourself. I, I am not saying that trans people need to take up arms and uh, go raiding and roving on the streets. I don't, I don't want to see this clip on libs of TikTok. But trans people should know how to defend themselves. Leftists, liberals should know how to defend themselves because shit rolls downhill. And if people feel, because there are people in this country right now who want to kill people like me, who want to kill trans people, who think the world is better off if black people are dead, if Jewish people are dead, They've, they've been inculcated in this, this far-right space and these ideologies. And the only thing stopping them from going out right now and killing a queer person, killing a black person, is the fact that they know they would probably be put in jail for it. But when you normalize, and, and this, is, this is the entire reason why people don't want Haya Reichick to have the platform she has because you are normalizing these ideas. Even if Haya Reichick, even if Libs of TikTok is not personally saying, you know, go out and hurt queer people, the things that she is pushing, the lies that she is indoctrinating her audience with, lead them to believe that were a queer person to get hurt, that is okay. That's why we've seen such an uptick in hate attacks. Um, and there was, there was a story I was reading earlier of, like, specifically, like, bigoted attacks in schools have been, have skyrocketed in places that Haya Reichick, or in, uh, in red states that have been targeting, not, not Haya Reichick, but in red states that have been targeting more trans youth. I think my lady, my dog, yes, do you have, where's your ball? Where's your ball? Come on, show me. Show me, ball. One second, everybody. I'm uh, I have some new treats for Lady. I'm gonna put in her toy. So every reason I get to hear some Lady ASMR real quick. Sniff, sniff, sniff. What? What are you sniff? What are you sniffing? There we go. 
go. Here we go. Oh, you're gonna like this. This is gonna keep you busy. Um, sorry, everybody. One second. So yeah, I would say that. Um, uh, be prepared. Like have a. I talked about this last night, but have a bug out bag. Stay in contact with local like leftist organizations and trans people in your areas, have a support network, um, stay safe. Like that, that is the biggest thing is that even if, and, and this is this is evergreen advice right now because trans people and queer people and leftists are in the middle of a culture war that is constantly advocating more and more violence against us. And the only way to really beat that is not to go out and be violent first because that largely that just affirms people's fears. The only way to beat that is to be safe and to be smart. And the way that you do that is you have uh, support networks. You have people that you know and people that you trust. You don't go out, you know, alone after dark and not tell anybody where you're going. Like just just be smart about everything you do um and it is just yeah all right here you go good girl oh she caught that she's ready to chew Question, how does one collect the confidence need to explore gender expression in public? I don't have much fear of violence as a big mass dude, but it's difficult to wear makeup outside of my home. Confidence. Um, that's a tough one. Chat name for chat. That is, I don't know. I There are days when I don't have confidence. And it is... <laughs> I mean, that's a very personal thing as everybody's relationship with their gender and their presentation and how they want to be perceived is going to be different. Um, and if, if you, I would say the best thing to have is again, have a friend. And this is not to say you need somebody who bullshits you, like you want an honest friend, but have queer friends, have queer people who accept you for who you are and who can maybe even help you with that, who can maybe even do your makeup, who can maybe even show you how to how to do it a little bit more. Because here's, here's my big thing, and I don't, I don't know how good you are at makeup, I don't know how long you've been doing it. But the thing for me, and I know a lot of people, a lot of trans people, a lot of non-binary people, when they, they start out with makeup, they struggle with it for a couple of reasons. One, the quality of the makeup they use to start off with is not that great. Two, they don't really know how to do a lot of stuff. Like they don't know how to do foundation, eyeliner, smoky eye, like that kind of thing. Um, like this, I have a very basic makeup look on right now. And it really, it helps accentuate my eyes. It help makes, helps make my face just look a little bit more feminine. And I threw this on in like five minutes. And that's because I did that a lot. Like I've, I've done that a lot and it takes a lot of time and effort to get there. So I would say Zarnia chest, yeah, just like it, it's something that you really have to, like if you're talking specifically that you want to have a gender expression um, in public like that, yeah, I would say like when it comes to makeup, you gotta work at it. Like there's there is no easy way to do it, but um, the biggest tip I would give to anybody setting out and doing makeup for the first time is just take it super easy. Take it super, like, little touches go so far. And my, I, I think for a lot of people just starting out with makeup, it's a big, um, it can be very affirming when you have somebody else do it and they really know what they're doing. And then it can be absolutely crushing when you do it and you have no idea and you spend a half hour and at the end it looks like you just have two black eyes. Like that was, that was when I first started doing makeup, that was one of the first things I was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna try and mix colors and it's gonna be super cute. And I, I love purple and red. I had no idea how to blend. I had no idea how to blend out. I had no idea how to 
like how far around the eyelid to go, how deep into the hood to go. Um, I had no idea that you want, you know, lighter colors on the inside, darker colors on the outside, because that generally catches like the, the shape of the skull and helps accentuate the eye shape. So like the, one of the first times I really tried doing colored makeup, it was just, it looked like I literally had two black eyes. Like somebody could just punch me in the face twice. And that was, that's like crushing. That's the kind of shit that puts people back in the closet for years. Um, so I would say get somebody, tutorials are your friend, um, as somebody else in, in said. Shower makeup, mix sparkles, that's a good idea. And be very subtle, like very subtle. Start with do not, and, I, and this is another thing that is very, like makeup is so fucking exciting and cool and I have so many palettes now and I still, I still get excited. I still get excited when I get a new palette, even if it has a bunch of colors I already have because um, I can blend them together and create new looks and I love that. But it is you, you want to start small. You want to start with little dabbles. You want to start with light shadowing. You want to get down how to do very small um, eyeliner. Like if you get an eyeliner pen, I recommend uh, NYX brand. They have a t little $10 eyeliner pen that is magnifique for really great fine lines. And be very careful with that because the, like, again, everything in makeup, little goes a long way. Um, but, yeah, I would say those are the things that, like, when, when you get those down, being able to do it right and being able to do it in a way that makes you feel good is such a massive boost to your confidence. Because, like, I don't necessarily care how mask I'm looking or how mask I'm dressing as long as I think I look cute. And whether that's, and that, that applies also to coordinating outfits and being able to, like, that was, that's been a big thing for me in the last couple of years. I've gotten rid of so many shirts that I love, but because for my entire cis life, most of my clothes has just been, like, they've been t-shirts. And so I've, I've thrown out or donated a bunch of those and I've diversified my wardrobe. I go thrifting a lot. I try and put together things. Um, what I try to do when I go thrifting is I'll say, okay, I only want to get, like I want to get a new top, but I also want to get a bottom. So I want to get a full outfit. And what en ends up happening is usually I can mix and match those with another thrift outfit that I bought. And so from there you can kind of expand your wardrobe and that way you have a variety of different colors and a variety of different things. And so when you try stuff on, when you just pick two things from the closet, much like with makeup, you get to a point where eventually you're not just throwing on the same old stuff. You are throwing on things that are styled differently, pants that fit a little bit differently, shirts that fit a little bit differently. So it's not going to be just the regular like masculine fit. And it, one might fit you very femininely. One might fit you more androgynously. And that's the other thing that like really makes me feel good is that like, okay, this is something that I'm only I can wear like this. Like this, this feels good to my gender expression. Um, so I think those, those would be the biggest thing is working on makeup, working on wardrobe. Because confidence comes from you. It, it, it shouldn't come from the validation other people are going to give you because as a trans person, as somebody of, you know, gender variety, there's no guarantee that you won't walk out the door and somebody won't call you a slur. So that, that confidence has to be, that has to be solid before you walk out the door because I've had, I've had that happen. I've had people yell at me at bus stations and follow me down blocks and that's, that's scary shit. But I'm confident in who I am because I have worked really hard to become who I am. I have worked very hard to be comfortable in my body and comfortable with how I present. And I, I think that is... Time and effort is where that confidence comes from. And a lot of trans people, like we don't have the same teenager upbringing... And a lot of the same social strata that, you know, more traditionally feminine people get. Like more, 
like girls go through high school and that's when they figure out how to do their hair, how to do their makeup, how to do like what things are tacky, what things are gauche. So if you're coming into it later in life, it becomes even more hard for you to adjust to that. And that's where you see a lot of people get made fun of online is when newly out trans women who might still be appearing a little bit more masculine or they might just be non-binary, they, they might just be experimenting with their gender and gender fluid. And you see TERFs and shit spread their, their photos and stuff around because they don't know how to do makeup yet, because they don't know how to do their hair yet. Um, and it's, I, I think it's fucked up to make fun of people like that because like, but women weren't born knowing how to do makeup. Like they're, hey, there are grown ass women I've seen who cannot do makeup. Who, who just can't like it's it, it's just all in all in the wrist yeah Lane Kaplan and basic foundation does, and I've actually I've stopped using foundation not like all together like if I'm doing a OnlyFans photo shoot I'll use foundation because um, that just photographs better if I'm doing a Bring ball. Ball. Bring me ball. Ball. If I'm doing an OnlyFans photo shoot, uh, the foundation will be better. If I'm doing a hello dog. I don't I don't have anything up here for you. Um like if I'm going out out, like for a really nice party or something, I'll do foundation, but by and large. How many of the women who can't do makeup are at CPAC? There's a lot of good makeup. Like, a lot of, you know, rich, upper-class white women can can do makeup pretty okay. Um, trans girl Jade. I've been trans for four years now, and I'm still learning how to do makeup. Yeah, it's it's a thing that I think a lot of people, they get gender euphoria, or, or they're very afraid to try it out. Um, and it, I think it's a lot like hair stuff. And my, like, I should fucking talk. My hair is all poofy and I haven't done anything with it. But, um, like, you notice a lot of trans girls have, like, very frizzy hair because they don't, like, they don't use the right conditioner. They've, they've grown out their hair, but they don't know how to properly treat it. They don't know how to properly straighten it or curl it or anything. And it's not that it looks bad, but it can be so much better. And it just takes a lot of time and effort to learn that. That, like, that doesn't make them any less trans. But, again, that time and effort can lead to so much gender euphoria. Um, and, of course, chat name for now. I know that was a very big, big answer, but it was a multifaceted question. Dupe face. Goth is a look I would love to do, but I haven't done anything about it. Go for it. Do it. Try it. Like, what? what is what is stopping you? Um, Adrian is vibing a super chat at five dollars. Do you think it is a okay idea to allow events like seat packing communities? Thoughts about the relationship between conservatism and queerness? I think the relationship between conserv I'll answer that question first because I think the relationship between conservatism and queerness comes down to self-loathing or people realizing later in life, or maybe you know maybe they were. It could be either way where. They realized or knew when they were younger they were queer, but then as they grew up, they realized they lean more conservative or they grew up conservative and later realized they were queer. And that can happen in any number of ways, but you get people like we're at CPAC on Grinder, who are just, they stay down low, they stay in the closet, and then they just kind of fuck guys on the DL. Or you get people like Lady Maga, who is openly queer, but still basically operates against queer people by constantly shooting down their concerns, by constantly invalidating the things they're worried about, by allowing violent rhetoric to be spread and basically facilitating that and being one of the good ones. Um, like, I, I think the only utility queer people have... Here's the thing. The only utility queer people have to conservatives is to be used as a cudgel against other queer people. There, there is not a conservative politician out there that would not throw Lady Maga into the Toy Story 3 furnace if it meant that they got to just 
be more mean to queer people. Like, not a single one. Um, so, that's that. When it comes to, do I think events like CPAC should be allowed in communities? I've, I've talked about it before, but I am not for censorship. Um, which, you know, fucking ask me in three years how I feel about that. Uh, because that could be a, a very lib cuck opinion that ages poorly. But I am not for, here's the thing. I'm not for public platforms allowing hate speech either. I think there are... There should be more rules in America around incitement, incitement to violence, incitement to misinformation. Um, so I, I would not say, because like that's the thing, is that you get these principled free speech absolutists, like short fat otaku is kind of one of those, um, where it's like, yeah, I'm, you might not like it, but they have a right to say it. And like, the problem is, is that again, these laws, the, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, all that stuff, was conceived in an era before everything we have now. You know, it, for, for me, saying, oh, every, anybody should be able to say whatever they want in, in modern day is the equivalent of pointing to uh, the Second Amendment and being like, well, this is why I should be able to own a minigun. Where it's like, I guarantee the founding fathers did not think when they wrote that you should have freedom of speech, I guarantee they were not thinking that one day somebody with 2.3, 3 million followers on Twitter could completely lie about like a trans person being a shooter and millions of people would believe it and spread it and spread violent invective like so it, it is it's one of those things that we as a society have not examined enough at it at the core of what it means to have that free speech and the responsibility that comes with it because i think we just do not treat it as if it has any responsibility like you you see that in the way uh higher edge if you haven't watched the um the video with taylor lorenz um go watch matt bernstein did a, a great video on it and i think uh samantha lux also did one it's been fun to just watch both of them read oh and kaylin kaylin did a really good one um so go watch all of them just read haya for filth um like she deserves and but it's been interesting to watch how she reacts to like the idea that her speech affects people beyond her because it, it basically there is a undercurrent on the conservative right and you see it with matt walsh you see it with ben shapiro you see it with all these people who have been cited in manifestos of mass shooters you've seen it with lauren southern tim pool where they will they'll be like well i'm not responsible for what my followers say and then they'll just keep saying the violent shit spreading the rhetoric that made their followers do the shit in the first place so like we, we we have not fully examined as a society the ramifications of that and i do not think we are going to um at least not before it gets to a much worse place than it is oh yeah and ai disinformation is like incredibly scary shit too dexter bunko has super chatted 999 trump and biden are not the same but societal momentum is a freight train freight train Prepare for things to get worse before they get better, regardless of the election outcome. Yeah. Um, even if if Trump doesn't win, thank God, but there's going to be... Like, I, I do not see... I don't want this to happen. But I do not see... And this is... I, I tried not to end the, the video, the CPAC 2 video, on a dour note. But I don't see a way in which if Trump loses... There is not violence somewhere, whether that is a group of MAGA supporters like trying to take over the White House or whatever. Um, like, I really think it's like, like whatever the outcome. Yeah, this is going to be a fucking bleak election year. Like there's, there's not, 
Biden is a best case scenario, but even then that's like not great when you look at Palestine and everything else. Yeah, exactly. 100% oxygen. Either things get worse or things don't. Yeah, either things get worse than they are now or they just stay pretty bad. Uh, Zarina Chess, Finster had to prove that his, her nudes weren't AI by doing certain things just to not look AI. That is bizarre. I didn't know that. Um. Luck draw. How do we even begin to deprogram? Conservatives? Um. I don't know. It's, it's, uh, here's the thing is I've been following, even before I started doing YouTube, for years and years, it's been my hobby, uh, basically, or one of my special interests to follow the conspiracists in politics. And so I've really kept a finger on the pulse as these movements have evolved from QAnon to um, Pizzagate to all of these like disparate save the children all of that shit and they're all connected in in various ways and I talked about it at the beginning of the sound of freedom video I did where like well-meaning people get sucked into these holes because they don't know better so and and COVID had a huge impact on this you have an entire generation of people who are not internet savvy they are not like you have boomers and Gen Xers and people who did not grow up like inculcated in the internet, who did not grow up knowing Usenet and knowing like how internet misinformation is spread and knowing about chain letters and all this shit and knowing like how to call bullshit when you see it on the internet. And so what you have now is all these people who will literally just believe anything they fucking see. Like there was, there was a, a post that was shared the other day of Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez. It was it was an incredibly fake tweet. Like everything about it looked like a shitty Photoshop. Like it was it was just a shitty Photoshop. And it was AOC saying saying that uh like tagging Biden in a fake tweet saying that they were going to make that they were going to start rounding up conservatives and in in the words of the fake AOC tweet make Auschwitz look like a summer camp or something. Like, like something so freakishly, cartoonishly evil. And there were people in the comments without, without even a second thought who were like, she needs to be in jail. She needs to be sentenced for treason. Like that's, that's the level of literacy we're talking about here where they can't even take a second to be like, is this thing that completely conforms to my worldview? Is it real? Yes. No. Because they would rather just believe that it entirely conforms to their worldview. Um, and like that is like seeing that in action. That's fucking rough. Like that is fucking. Like that's the kind of stuff that when you see it, you're like. Uh, like what, what do we do? What do we do about that? Uh, canola oil, it's kind of fucked that the media is more open to the hatred and bigotry of, bigotry of Trump than they are to Bernie are of Bernie or AOC. Yeah, that's because, like, at the end of the day, the, the people who run those newsrooms and stuff decide what stories get run. Oh, are you bothering me already? Have you already finished your toy? Goodness gracious. Mm. Sorry, I'm not eating a snack. I'm getting this for my dog. Yeah, and that's the other thing is that liberals will choose fascism over communism because like fascism allows people who are comfortable to continue living in comfort. Like upper middle class, hey, sit, sit. Good girl. Upper middle class white suburbans, suburbanites, 
Like when when if if Trump gets elected, like whatever is going to happen across the country, uh, it's not going to target the upper middle class white liberals. It's not going to target the well-meaning Christian moms who have, you know, in this house, we believe love is love on their front lawn. It's going to target disproportionately people of color, queer people, people who are already indisposed in society. Um, which is why I think, again, like it's easier for so many middle of the road liberals to be like, oh, stop being so extreme about Palestine. Oh, Bernie is a radical. It's because it's it doesn't, much like the Trump voters who, who get literally clutch their pearls when Trump says, Hamas is coming to take over your Waffle Houses. I, I editorialized the Waffle House. He didn't say Waffle House. I just thought it was funny. Um, they He did say Hamas is coming to take over your suburbs. But like it, it's, they, they don't have skin in the game. Not tangibly. Not really. Um, so yeah, like, like when push comes to shove, they're going to go with the thing that will keep allowing them to be comfortable, at least for a time. Hello. Hello, dog. Do you, do you want? I can't tell. Do you want something? Sniff, 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 sniff. Lay. Stay. Look at me. Look at me. Stay. Um. Yeah. What other? Do we have any other questions about Sipak? Hey, I see you. Sit. I didn't say you could go yet. Oh my gosh, we have a bunch of... Thank you very much. Um, mana? No. Armaha. Maha. 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 Thank you for following. Quentin, thank you for subscribing. And Crimson Snarf, thank you for following. The Eccentric Gentleman, were there any Trump flubs during the speech? Aside from the fact that the entire thing was just really pedantic and boring, no. Like, it, it was... Like he here's the thing about Trump is that and I mentioned it in the video but he is a good speaker. Like at, at a basic level when it comes to telling stories and jokes I fully believe he's full of shit. But he is good at telling a story. He does know how to keep somebody interested and invested. He does know how to introduce characters and and like he does little voices and he makes like it is it's very basic showmanship which is what he's good at. He has always been good at, you know, quote unquote, selling the sizzle. Not selling the steak, selling the sizzle. And that's that's his brand. That's what he does. So it's not surprising that he's good at that. Um, but everything, like, the fact that it was all in service of just this empty, cloying applause was so disgusting to just like be in the middle in the midst of that was just 100 percent oxygen uh these people are unaffected until the puppet masters need to divert attention from real issues again then we get more fear-mongering and division yeah um ever icon ever a core uh do you have any more comments on the 2025 trump plan yeah project 2025 is um all right, let me let me read this super chat real quick. Aliobite, thank you for super chatting five bucks. Uh, coming from a girl who is living in their car currently, don't be a doomer. There is always hope. I am sorry about that, Aliobite. And yes, there is there is always hope. Like nobody should. If you want, here's here's my philosophy on it. And if you want a good little, because I I can't imagine everybody's watched it. Um. But go watch my video on Wolfenstein. If if you feel down and you feel sad about the way the world is and feel hopeless about the world ahead go listen to what i say in my wolfenstein essay 
If you hear my dog crying, that's because she's sitting, staring at her ball, and I haven't let her go yet. And so she's just staring at it, and she thinks I've forgotten about her. I haven't forgotten, baby. Good girl. There she goes. There she goes. Sweet baby. Giga Ashley, thank you for super chatting $5. Thank you for your journalism. Thank you. Also, the shoulder top looks so slay on you. Thank you. Crocter Gambles, I think that's the first video of yours I saw. It's still one of my favorites. Yeah, all of my... I really wish my... Um, I really wish my gaming essays did better. Like, I... And that's, that's kind of been one of the cool things is that I hope they will get to a point where enough... They've trickled down to enough people. My, my political stuff is always going to be just like... By nature of views, it's always going to be the top, and that's fine. But just because my media analysis content is also very explicitly political, like the one where I talk about communism and dishonor, the one where I, you know, break down all the themes of the modern Wolfenstein games. Like, those are my, my favorite ones. Um, Lorraine Drosophilia, I super chat two dollars. Are they deaf to Trump's actual word? Yes, I think so. Like I sincerely, they they don't see an issue with every every extreme measure they see as justified. Like that that's one of the things I wanted to get across in the CPAC video is that like when they talk about when Stephen Miller, who by the way I I haven't talked about it enough, um. Stephen Miller is one of the most disgusting, like, skin suit wearing psychopaths I've ever been in a room with. Like most most everybody I encountered at CPAC, you know, deeply broken, depraved, evil people for sure. Um, but they think they're doing good. You know, like Joseph Strickland is is a great example. When I was in when I was in Joseph Strickland's presence. Kind of constantly, like the dude was just out and about, which surprised me the the whole time. He was just out talking to people and stuff. Um, and like, but just like listening to him talk, listening to him, watching him interact with regular people, Joseph Strickland gives off a warm presence. He believes and has perpetuated awful bullshit. But I, I do believe that he thinks he is doing good for the world. Stephen Miller, just watching him interact on that stage, seeing him work the crowd and get them frothing like he was, seeing him juxtaposed against the, like, I think there were three other panel members there, and the way that he would just get so venomous and vile over the littlest things. Like, he is a truly, like, just depraved personality. Like, you, you look at... Like, the things he said, his history, he is, he's like a, a 4chan asshole. Like, he's, he's just so gross, like skin crawling. Even his, I, I don't, I didn't put enough footage of it in, but like his mannerisms, the way he acts, the way he moves is just like, like actual psychopath shit. Um, Red Manor 12 is super chatted $10. How much of Project 2025 do you think could actually be implemented? I'm assuming the Supreme Court would have a lot to say about the interior executive theory. You might think. You might think. But then you uh, should remember that uh, the, the Supreme Court is currently packed with conservative justices who are still relatively young. And uh, they just, like, said that, no, it's okay if Trump runs. Like, I... I, I think we've reached a point where the Supreme Court would not stop it at all. And uh, the the true terrifying part about Project 2025 is, again, and I, I was talking about this with my partner last night, is that Trump is a sounding board. Like, he, he is a mirror that just reflects the conservative ideology. And I, I've talked about it, but I don't think, like, Trump, if you put Trump in a room with a trans person, I don't think he gives a fuck. I, I sincerely don't. I don't think he cares about trans people. I certainly don't think he cares about, like, the Bible. I think he cares about power and affirmation. So, which he gets from having his following. 
he gets that from having his cult of personality. What 2025 basically admits to is being put together by a cadre of lobbyists, billionaires, puppet masters behind the scenes who are going to use Trump to push forward their agenda, the thing that is in their best interest. Like, it is not... It is not necessarily that Trump... Like, I, I don't think Trump had anything to do with writing it up. I think it is a bunch of people saying, what can we use Trump to get done? And that's the scary part, because he'll just say yes to all of that shit. Um... Yeah, no, Henry Tan, did you see uh, John Oliver's segment on the Supreme Court justices? It's wild how they get away with everything because they regulate themselves. Yeah, no, the Supreme Court is fucking busted in this country. And, uh, mm, yeah, it's, uh, <sighs> Dr. Robotnik, Trump believes in nothing, literally nothing other than giving his supporters whatever they want. Yeah, like he, he plays to their, like, and, and you can even see it when, his supporters occasionally slightly turn on him where it'll be like they'll be talking about um, like COVID where he'll say like, I got the vaccine. You don't have to get the vaccine. I got the vaccine. And everybody in the crowd will start booing because they've been inculcated with these bullshit theories that it's going to give them microchips and it's going to, you know, take over their brains or whatever the fuck. But Trump doesn't believe all that shit. So he's like, yeah, I got the vaccine. Um, $2, Lorraine Drosphilia. Thank you very much. Wolfenstein always gives me hope. Blam Hitler. So true. Uh, Kobo New. Thank you for four ninety nine. How do you come up with your on-the-spot remarks in the conversation with hogs? Um, I, I don't know. Like, I was... I don't want to toot my own horn too much, but, like, listening back to the CPAC video... And when I was editing it and editing through what I was saying to, like, the reporters and saying to, like, the lady, like, when I just started spitting game about Jesus, I, I have no fucking idea where that came from. Like, I was, I was just, I was just in the mindset. Like, you know, when I'm, when I'm there, I'm, I'm another person. I am, yeah, it's improv. Like, I am... I am treating it like a role. I am inhabiting that role. And so, okay, what would key, what would this person I've created, what would their first reaction be to that? And it wouldn't be normally like my real reaction. If somebody were to tell me those same things, like, hey, I believe this and my kids don't talk to me anymore because of it. My reaction as Jordan, as Dead Domain, in, in real life would be like to listen intently, to try and get to the source of their problems, and to offer constructive criticism. As Keith, my reaction was to put the blame off essentially on God, on, on trials and tribulations. Um, so it's it's not a... You know, it's it is it is that character. I, I am inhabiting that when I'm there. Um, Zoller Huss, do you have to like contact those news agencies and interview you to say, hey, I was undercover, then I am not an actual conservative? I don't think so. I've so I've checked and I haven't been able to find anything published on me. Um, I don't think they're going to, because A, it's been a little while. B so much of the CPAC packages that I saw, super fucking short. Super fucking short. I watched a uh, a Channel Four anchor. I think I, I showed it in the first video. A Channel Four anchor on from the the British Channel Four. Um, Channel Four anchor was arguing with Bishop Strickland, and they they were sitting there arguing for like fifteen minutes, and that got reduced. The video I saw from Channel Four, that was all about CPAC. It was the only video they did for a package. It was like a five second clip. They, they were standing there for minutes on end, arguing. And it got just... So, when reporters do packages like that, speaking from experience, having worked over literally in a, in a local newsroom, um, a local TV station, you get way more B-roll than you need. 
You get way more interview stuff than you need. And when they're going to places like that, they are going especially for the ability to not necessarily mock, but they want to find the weird shit. So somebody like me who was relatively... Lady. Dog, you are being so uncouth. Thank you. Um, like somebody like me who is answering their questions... Like, th that was the thing, is that I had to ride this line, and the reason why I included those in the video, and this is another thing I've been criticized about, but the reason why I included those in the video is, again, I wanted to give a first-person account of what it's like to be a conservative there. And that includes people from more left-leaning publications coming to interview you, trying to maybe catch you in a gotcha, trying to test your knowledge on things like the Bible and how Trump uh, aligns to that. And I, I wanted to show that as well, because that that's a reality of how conservatives have to navigate their own spaces is that they have to like be ready to answer these questions from people who are very obviously like the Swedish lady who are very obviously like do you really think Trump is is a good Christian do you really think he's representative of of the Bible um and the reason I I don't think that she's published anything for me is that like I was a lot more eloquent I was a lot more uh, straightforward and outwardly knowledgeable and just kind of firm in what I said, which was still all within. I, I didn't pull... The other reason why I, I'm, I'm fine putting these in here is that I did not pull a Walter Masterson, which Masterson does this with conservatives. So it's, it's an entirely different thing. But what he does is um, he interviews them and makes their positions look stupid by way of either agreeing with him or by way of saying stuff like like the thing he said to one of the other uh, conservatives is like, yeah, my girlfriend wasn't 18 at the time. And, and like just these things that they just skate over. And you have to wonder, it's like, why? Why didn't you? Why didn't you nip that in the bud right there? Um, but I couldn't do that because I'm, I am technically representing that ideology. And I want to represent it in a way that is... While it is authentic that there are crazy people in that ideology, I could not speak to that because I was not authentically there. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a complicated thing. Uh, Gabriel, thank you very much for super chatting $10. You hate church videos, genuinely terrifying. I was literally crying while watching. I am so sorry. I hope you're taking your safety into account when doing these things. I am. I definitely do. Austin St. Clair, thank you very much for super chatting $4.99. Just thought, some, like, hey, hey. Shush. Do you grumble at me? Um, just thought to let you know, anytime you need some restoration for faith in humanity, Judge Caprio Kant in Providence is an absolute best. I will check that out. Um, the eccentric gentleman. Oh, chaotic kitten. Did you see Walter Masterson at CPAC? I did not recognize him, but I did see him. He's in my first video. I I I, I talked about this a little bit earlier. You might have missed it. Um, but um, there is a point in the first video. If you go back, you can actually see uh, him debating his young Republican colleague. Some some people have have tagged it in the in the uh, the comments. Um, yeah, they I think they watched Walter Masterson's video and then came back and like scrubbed through mine. Um, yeah, some people have called it out. So yes, I did see him. I didn't recognize him at the time. Um. The eccentric gentleman, dead domain. So CPAC, in your opinion, big conservative culture commercial or serious conservative think tank? Culture commercial. Yeah, there's there's nothing, there's no thought behind it. Like there is no, um, like there's there's nothing about it that is, that was, and that was the most disappointing thing is because I love like weird facts and statistics. I love getting nitty gritty, especially when I get to debunk it and I get to do research. Like that's the shit I thrive on. And there was so little, which is maybe good for a four-day event um, because the workload would have been a bitch, like it already was, but there's so little meat to chew on in those talks. Like there's there's no thought. There's no, you know, the, I, I figured, okay, at least, okay, there might be political strategies. You know, there might be like, what are, what are they really doing to get into school boards? What are they really doing to organize like uh, parents groups? You know, whether that's against the Wokies or trans rights or whatever. Like, what what is what really is conservative political strategy and how do they come up with it? None of that shit is there. At the, at the biggest gathering of conservative minds of the year, none of that shit showed up. 
And it's just, it's literally, it is head empty politics. It is literally Matt Schlapp and Donald Trump and everybody who attended it just opening up the brains of the audience and like, like a baby bird just vomiting buzzword salad just right into their craniums and then patting him on the head and giving him a Trump shirt. Like it's, it is just the pure crass commercialism of like unfettered Reaganistic capitalism meets Christian nationalism. Somebody asked, um, can you give one word to describe CPAC in a nutshell from misanthropic? Surreal. I feel like surreal is a is a is a very multifaceted word, but I I think that really like captures how fucking bizarre it is. Like it is bizarre is another word. It, it's so nightmarish is a little too harsh. I feel because it's not in that that way you feel panic or fear. At least it, that's not the way it was for me. I think Lynchian might be a a good way to describe it. Because it is, it is, there is something about it that is dark and strange and wrong in a way that you can't quite, like, always identify easily. But you know it when you see it. You know that, like, okay, there's something fucking cooked here. Even if, if again, even if you don't know why. And so, um, yeah, I would say, I would say lynching is a good way to describe it. I need a haircut. Um, Natenbach64, thank you for super chatting $5. I find it truly sad and horrifying seeing MAGA hats use the Bible as an excuse in ways that are very unchristian like for at least in my opinion. Yeah, it's uh just the way again, like cognitive dissonance does not exist there. Like the way that they will use it as a cudgel to be like, oh, the Bible says this, so we should all do this. And then they'll talk about how the Democrats are evil and the Democrats don't believe in turning the other cheek and they're they're coming to get you. And it's like, you're listening to people on the stage talk about how they're literally going to weaponize the law. Like, what are you talking about? Can you talk about that awful meal? Yes, give me one second. I'm gonna go reload my bubble tea and I'll be right back. Bubble tea reloaded. And it spilled on me. And it's okay. Hey, dog. Do you mind? Do you mind, pupper? Pupper. Pupper dog. No, that's my bubble tea. You don't get bubble tea. No bubble tea for pupper. No bubble tea for pupper. No, I just bought two um, before the stream because I knew I would want another one. It's my, it's one of my days off, so I'm, I'm treating myself. Um, Cornelius Rupert has super chat ten dollars. Criminals, dimwits, liars, and the insane. Yeah, that kind of tracks it. Um, this is which one is this? Flavor wise, this is a peach jasmine fruit tea. With tapioca. Now I have chipmunk cheeks because I have boba in my face. You too, Coda Anthony. Thank you for stopping by. Unbeliever, why do you think queer people like Lady Maga subject themselves to communities that are so against them? I think it is. I was talking about this a little bit earlier, but I think it's a cognitive dissonance of, like, they know they're queer. They know they are gay or they have a passion for, you know, gender nonconformity or in Lady Maga's case, in the art of drag, which is a, a legitimate art form. But at the same time, they can't reckon that with their inherent, whether it's self-loathing or just like the, the bigotry of their positions. Um, and usually, here's the thing. If they aren't far enough in, you can usually talk them out of it. 
like so many people, and it is easy, not, not that everybody's a pick me who does this, but it is easy to get kind of lost in the sauce of a movement where you are, like you can look at, here, here's a great example. Here's a great example, right? Um, Brianna Ivy, somebody who has been on D-trans uh, stuff in the past, who has, um, is, was for a long time a trans medicalist. I don't think she is anymore. She follows me on Twitter. She comments on my stuff all the time. I commented on one of her videos where she, it was basically, her video was like a huge D-trans diatribe about how like non-binary people and um, like a lot of gender non-conforming people are people who don't make an effort to fully change every aspect of their sexual identity are not real trans people and they're making other trans people look bad. And for some people, those kind of positions are very easy to latch on to. Like when you see people, if you have suffered your entire life as a trans person, you've gone through prejudice and persecution, and you see, you know, it's, it's almost the, it's, it's much different, but it's, it's similar to the, um, like that vitriol that you get every now and again from people who are mad about college payments. Where they're like, I suffered for 20 years paying off my student debt. Why do some people just get it? Like, they should have to pay it too. And it's like, do you really want everybody to have to suffer that way though? Like, like, has it not occurred to you that some people are also different just in a different way than you are? But for the right wing, it's easy to radicalize those people and be like, ah, oh, yes, look at these, these other left-leaning people. They're making you look bad. You are one of the good ones. You are rational and understanding. You understand that you're not actually a woman. And, and so they will try and fit themselves into that box to appease them. Because on the right wing or on the left wing, people online will be like, yo, fuck you. Like, who, who are you to dictate what other people can or can't do with their gender? Who are you to say what is or isn't valid? And so when they get pushback like that, they, they feel much more comfortable going over to the right wing, even if people there hate them. Like, like God, I, I hate to say poor Lady Maga because, like, it's, you know, it's a bed you make and you sleep in it. But, like, she literally, literally had somebody as soon as i turned off the camera like not seconds after as soon as i turned off the camera she had somebody yell at her and call her disgusting like an old lady just like with the the most wrinkled old prune face just like disgusting as she as the old lady walked by and lady maga just like turned to me and smiled and shrugged and i'm like i would that was one of the few points that i was like literally in disbelief i was like like, I, God, I, I, oh, I wish I would have caught it on camera. But I, I, again, it's one of those things. I had no fucking idea that would happen. I had no idea. But it's, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I wonder, you know, you can, you can, you can speculate all day on how much these people, like, might hate themselves. And I think there is a contingent of people in this kind of pick me space. And it's, it's a broad pick me space. It's not just trans people. It's not just gay people. Um, I think one of the best examples I've seen is just pearly things. And I think she is, she is like a cis Blair white in that I truly deeply believe she just loathes herself and gets, thrives off of that negative attention. Cause if you, if you go back, God, who was I watching that did a really great video on just pearly things? I think it might've been Jen from Fundy Fridays who had a phenomenal video, like really digging into like her past history of videos and how like Just Pearly Things has had a lot of like very obvious feelings of body dysmorphia that they haven't like dealt with in any way. It's, it's stuff like that that I look at and I'm like, like damn, like that, it, 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 that made me fucking sad. FD Signifor did a, did a good, um, good video too. And I think Blair White is in that same range as just pearly things, where I think, like, Blair White can have, you know, Blair White is somebody who has done 
everything in her power to appease, to be the good conservative trans, you know? And will still get called out. And God, that fucking panel she's on where that woman, I don't even remember her name, um, that woman like says, why don't you just grow out your beard? And it's like, God, what a vicious bitch. Um, sorry, my dog wants to play ball. Want to play ball? Um, yeah, and it's, it's like stuff like that that I, I look at and I'm like, how do you... Like, how do you spend your life living as a woman and doing everything you can to appease these people only to be faced with such obvious hate. Like, how do you draw that distinction in that group between like, oh no, these are the people who like me. These are the people who hate me. Like, it's okay that, it's okay that, you know, people don't see me as a woman because Michael Knowles respected my pronouns once. Is it like, it, it's just cognitive dissonance. I cannot think anything else, but she thrives on the Negative attention. Also, I hate Blair White's nose job. I'm just going to say it. I think she looks like a who. In a bad way. Derogatory. Yeah, no, Rubber Freak. That's the other thing. Is the... Like, the... You, you see it with Buck Angel. Where he's still like, I'm still a bi biological woman. It's like... Come the fuck off it, dude. Nobody, nobody looks at Buck Angel and is like, yeah, that's a woman. Like, you live as a man. You live in male spaces. You go through life and people see you and they assign you male privilege. Like, and the, the same thing with Blair White. Like, when people talk about gender being socially constructed, that's what they mean. They mean, when you are walking down the street, is somebody more likely to open the door for you? Or is somebody more likely to expect you to open the door for them? And that's a very old-fashioned notion, but you get the idea. Is somebody going to come to you and say, hey, can you open this jar for me? Or is somebody going to go, oh, hey, miss, do you need help with that? Like, there are innumerable social tangents that are a result of how people see gender. And they are so small and multifaceted that most people don't even realize that they're doing them. Even even good allies, even people who don't like consciously think about that kind of thing. So when people are like, oh no, dude, like sex isn't gender, it's like, you can't stop that because if, if somebody looks feminine enough, like if Finster goes out in their feminine wear, people are gonna, like I guarantee straight men are gonna hit on them. Because they think Finster's a cute girl. Regardless of what they identify as. And that's, like, that's just the tea. That's just how it is. Um, and that, like, ultimately, I think that's the biggest problem for conservatives to argue against. I think that's why they don't understand non-binary people or willfully don't understand non-binary people, which is what I get all the time. It's like, I get constantly on here, you'll never be a woman. And it's like, Honey, I've never said I was. I've never used she, her pronouns. I have never said I was a woman. Like, okay. I'm I'm okay with that. <laughs> but like, it, it just, to them, they don't understand the distinction between sex and gender. And how gender, some people want to represent themselves differently. And some people feel comfortable outside of that binary. Um... Which is very funny. Uh, anyway, sorry. Mixed pants. Thank you for $20. As scary as the anti-trans rhetoric is, as someone in my 40s, it gives me hope to see how much it mirrors the now-dated anti-gay rhetoric, anti rhetoric I grew up with. The world is getting better. Let's keep the, the pressure on it. I completely agree. I think... I hope to live in a world where one day my adopted children will be able to look back on anti-trans panic and laugh. Daddy Trump. 
Oh, uh, thank you, Lorraine, for two dollars and for reminding me of Daddy Trump. And Schooly Mom, thank you very much for uh, super chatting twenty dollars. Uh, Planer Walk, thank you for super chatting five dollars. In I'm assuming that's New Zealand currency. I went to a counter protest over drag story time the other day, and the phobic protest signs talked more about trans women in sports. Gave me whiplash. That sounds about right. Like that sounds about like what I'd expect. Sit. Lay. Lay. Catch. Oh, you missed it, dumb dog. Uh, Lane Kaplan, I'm MB and a trans woman. I do get hurt sometimes with the never be a woman thing, but it usually is just tedious. Yeah, like that's the thing is that like there's there's no. It's it's the same thing, and I think doing comedy really cemented this idea to me. But like. A joke isn't funny if you've put no work into it. You know? Like, like if you go to open mic comedy and you can see any number of... Dog, you're just breathing right into the mic. That is so annoying. You can see any number of, like, fresh college, like, jocks who think they are so funny. Do I not have... Oh, I don't have any... Dog. Dog, you're killing me. Dog. Lady. Lady. Why are you being such a butthead? Dog is being just a ding dong. No, you're just going to sit there and think about what you've done. All your gross little slurping. Um, dog is living dog's best life. This dog, this dog has it pretty, pretty well. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, like, you get, at, at open mics, you get no shortage of like try hard college dudes who think they're so funny and their friends are like oh yeah you should totally go up and do comedy you'll kill it and and oh tell that one story from that one party or tell that story of that one girl you hooked up with it'll be so funny and the story might be funny when it happened it might have been funny might have been funny for the friends but they've put no effort into timing out the punchlines timing out the setups They've put no thought or effort into how they're going to word certain things, what they're going to leave the audience hanging on, how they're going to lead and tell the actual story, how they're going to break away from it, if they're going to have a joke at the end that comes back around to the beginning. Like, they don't think about any of that shit. All they think about is, you know, the getting to the point of the story, whether it's they fucked the girl or they had to shit so bad like those. And I only bring those two up because I've heard those, that genre of story from different college dudes so many times, so many times. And because it doesn't have a punchline, it's not funny. Like it, it might've been funny when it happened to you. You might think it's funny, but this is comedy. It's not funny. It doesn't have a punchline. It's not a joke. It's, it's just kind of a, a, like a funny story, but it's not a joke. And that's the way I feel when transphobes come into the comments like, you'll never be a woman. It's like, you've put in no effort here. Like, you have done nothing to create an insult that is tailored to me. Like if, if you were to, to lead these two things, try and, try and parallel them up, right? You would want the insult to end in a punchline. And if I'm going to, like, like for example, um, if I insult somebody, I'm going to pick on something of them personally. Or, or even if it's just a roast, even if it's good hearted. You know, like I have a friend, Colton Drake, who does uh, open mic comedy. And there was one of my, one of my favorite little roasts of him I did was when he was wearing a, because uh, he has tons of like really cool shirts and he's he's a big like lumberjack looking dude sweetest sweetest guy um like kind of like a lumberjack hipster type like six feet tall could have been a linebacker um 
and he was wearing this it was like fall and he was wearing this goofy shirt and the joke I told it was just like a quick roast from on stage because I thought of it and it was like uh, you know Colton Drake looks like if you cut him he would bleed pumpkin spice IPI because that kind of combined the pumpkin shirt it combined a kind of hipstery look it combined something relative like he kind of looks like an IPA guy and that went over really well because I'm basing that on a personal attribute. When you just, if I were to just say, look at, look at his shirt, that's nothing. Like, like I'm, I'm putting no fucking work into that. And that's the thing is like, I can't, I can't be harmed. I cannot allow, like, I just, I, I don't have it in me to be offended by something that took no fucking work. Like I can insult myself better than you. What the, what? You think this is going to hurt me? Like, I'll never be a woman. Like, that's... It's Bush League. Get out of here. Um, Epsilon has super chatted $10. Thank you very much. Speaking of comedy, this is my best joke. What do you call a bilingual egg? Trans A translator. That's pretty, that's pretty good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Luck draw. I'm debating between... Sorry, I'm, I have chipmunk cheeks. I'm chewing boba. Um, I'm debating between the gay clubs in Philly with an open mic night or actual comedy clubs with an open mic night. Not sure where I feel more comfy. Try both. I know I feel better at the actual comedy clubs than the queer comedy clubs because um, the local queer comedy club... Well, it's at the local like gay bar, but it is full of... Like uh, what's the word? Tender queers. It is full of tender queers who do not like anything spicier than their sex lives and their therapy sessions joked about. And I just I literally get no pleasure from from doing that. <laughs> hmm. Hey, dog. How you doing? My actual joke about a hate crime might not go well. Got it. It depends. Like, it depends on the audience. Here's here's the thing about a real comedy club, though. And, and your audience, like, your queer club audience could be totally different. Totally different. Like some people are harder. It, you know, it just depends on the on the the group, the area. But um, when it comes to like, I was I was talking about this with a friend actually last night. Is that so many? I think there there is this perception, and this is the thing I always recommend: more queer comics and more people, more non-binary people. There's this perception among, and it's unfounded. It's based in shit like Joe Rogan, right? This perception among people of a slightly older demographic, not all white, largely white, not all white, but slightly older comedians, that if you are queer, if you're a woman, if you are this, that, or the other, they are, and this, again, is not true for everybody, but broadly, they will see you, and the first thing they'll think is, oh, great, this is going to be political. This is going to be a joke about Trump. This is going to be a joke about, like, stupid rednecks or about queer shit. And basically, here's the thing. It's not that you're making those jokes. It's that they think that you won't be able to hang with raunchier stuff. Like, they think that you will get offended or get mad. And nobody wants to do that, especially, especially at an open mic, because here's the thing. The, the line between something that's really offensive and something that's legitimately funny at an open mic when people are trying to like test new material, trying to see how it lands, sometimes they just swing for the fences. Like I've heard people I know are not bigoted, like I legitimately know they're not bigoted, say some shit that I'm like, mm, 
maybe not. You know, it's it's a tough line to walk. But I think the biggest thing, and this has been so eye-opening in my own comedy, is the amount of older guys, like guys in their 40s, 50s, who have come up to me and asked about the proper way to address me. Because I can tell, I can tell by the way that they're already asking, they have no idea how to ask somebody's pronouns. They have no idea, and they, you know, they will always tell me too. It's like, sorry, I don't, I don't know a lot of this stuff, so it might take a little while. And it's, yeah, it's fine, it's whatever. But the fact that I've shown multiple times that not only am I able to hang in that space, that I'm not an offended lib cuck or whatever, but that I can be, that queer people can be edgy too, that we can use queerness. To not just make other people laugh, but also relate to them with similar experiences. And that's that's really the power of comedy. When when people talk about, you know, conservatives, a lot of conservative comics like to use that as an idea to get away with saying shit. They'll say like, oh, you know, these are just jokes. Which I, I have a joke about that where it's like conservative comics, they love to say some heinous shit and then say, ah, these are just jokes. So that you know that they think being racist or transphobic or homophobic is actually funny. And that's true. It's like they like to couch it in these are just jokes. But there is a a smidge of truth when they say things like, you know, comedy should be about uniting us and it should be about bringing us together. Because it really should. It should be about relating your experiences to another person. That's, that's what's funny. You know, like if, if you tell a joke about... And, and being non-binary, having been with, you know, men and women and everything in between, like, sex jokes are just an open field for me. Like, I can tell jokes that men in the audience will get from a sexual perspective. But I can also tell jokes and that all the women in the audience will get from a sexual perspective. Like, I can tell a joke about having sex with a straight man and that would have all the women laughing. I can tell a joke about what it's like to have sex as a man that would have all the men laughing. Um, and, and those kind of relationships that you build through comedy, I think that is what gets, it's, it's, you know, it's exposure. I've talked about it in the past, but the way that people drop their prejudices, the way that people drop their preconceived notions is if you're out there proving them wrong yourself. If you are out there showing them what actual queer people are like, showing them how chill non-binary people are like. Like I am now, for, for several 40 and 50 year old men and women, straight older people, who would otherwise have no queer friends and have nobody in their life who is queer. I am now, on their volition, because they respect me enough, they come to me and say, hey, what are your pronouns? It's, it's also pretty cute because a lot of them will like run jokes by me from time to time. They're like, hey, is this an okay, like they, them joke? Which is always funny because I'm like, I don't know. Um, but it's, it's that level of like, I don't, like they have that respect for me as a peer, you know? Um, and you can only get that by, you know, putting yourself out there. Like that's, that's the thing is like, and I have no doubt that because here's the thing that because I have done that, I don't know how they vote. I don't know if they have kids in school, but I can almost guarantee you if they were to hear anti-trans rhetoric, if they were to hear trans people are all groomers, if they were to hear these non-binary people are just weirdo freaks. And they just want to censor everybody and they just want to control how you think. Those people are going to think of me because they know me. And they know from knowing me that that shit's not true. And that's the magic of exposing people to different ideas and different beliefs. Is that you can show other people how preconceived notions are wrong. And that, that is really the only way only way to overcome prejudices 
Like studies have shown, facts have shown time and time again. The reason why people become less racist, less bigoted towards gay people, towards queer people, towards trans people, is because they, someone comes into their life who is those things. Because they have somebody, and you know, it's not true of everybody. Some people are born with empathy. Or some people just like believe in empathy. Sometimes it's performative. Like for a lot of liberals around George Floyd, that shit was very performative. They didn't fucking stick it out. But. Yeah, exactly. Unbeliever. What makes anti-trans legis on Twitch saying what makes anti-trans legislation so powerful is the fact that most people do not know trans people. Exactly. Exactly. If more people knew trans people, knew non-binary people, were friends with them, like so much of that would change. But they don't want that. That is the biggest problem. And that is really what Libs of TikTok campaigns for is that people like her and the people that spread her rhetoric don't want people to get to know trans people. They don't want them to literally like figure out that like trans people are pretty much just like everybody else. <laughs> Cause then their entire shtick would just dissipate. Luck draw. Thank you very much for gifting a tier one sub to Dr. Robotnik and nine tailed witch. Thank you for following. <laughs> Crocter Gamble says, hi, YouTube chat over on Twitch. Misanthropic. My mom, when she talks about trans people, she always has to talk about the sexual activity for some reason that makes me uncomfortable. It, okay, here's the thing. I'm an incredibly, if, if you guys hadn't figured it out yet, I'm an incredibly open person. Like, I will pretty much, I won't talk about it on stream for obvious reasons, but, like, I will tell almost anybody anything just for the asking. Last night I was out to dinner, not out to dinner. I was out for a drink with one of my partners and some friends of hers from her job, right? And the friend was really curious about me being a trans femme and my partner who is who is non-binary but also presents as a woman and was born a femme. Presents very femininely. Um, and kind of, you know, is, is whatever with gender, but like, likes to present very pretty. And so she was just the, the person we were talking to was just so, and also very drunk. So much less inhibition about asking her questions, but like was so curious about me and my sexuality and how it worked for us both being open. And I think so much of the curiosity about trans people and, and a lot of the initial like reactions of disgust comes from just a massive misunderstanding of what it's like to be trans. Where really, it's not, like sexually, it's not that different than being cis. It's, it's really not. Um, it, it's like, it's the same thing that for, you know, years growing up, especially growing up in the early 90s, I was always taught how disgusting gay people were and how gross the sex they had was and how diseased it was and just like it was all gross and bad and disgusting only to later be like no they like most gay people are pretty fucking up to date are like probably safer with sex than most cis people like by and large like culturally they have to be lady why are you moving my weights stop it um I forgot what I was saying. My dog distracted me. Yeah, no. Oh, damn it. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Okay. Sorry. Excuse me. Um, 
two trucks holding hands it's a direct ramification of hiv aids yes absolutely like it, like culturally gay people are predisposed to being okay taking constant sti tests wearing condoms but like gay sex is not disgusting it's just sex like you just, you you might have to prep for it with bottom stuff but like for the most part it's just sex Yeah, exactly. Quite kitteny. Not gonna lie, if you think about it, straight sex also kind of gross. Yeah, it's like, it, but it's it's normalized is the thing, which makes and that's that's another thing that libs of TikTok wants is they want queer people to feel disgusting, to feel like they have to hide themselves and be ashamed because what they're doing is gross and deviant and disgusting when really it's not. Like. <laughs> It's all disgusting, your local ace. Yeah, we got some ace love in the chat. <laughs> all right, do we have any other questions about CPAC? CPAC questions, bump, 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 bump. I am mute. I've heard of Smear the Queer. I've heard of that for sure. Um, I didn't really smell Mike Lindell. <clears throat> I imagine he smelled like Old Spice, but I covered myself in Old Spice. I had... <laughs> I don't, oh, God damn it. I don't think I posted the picture of it. But the things I bought were classic Old Spice for deodorant and then Aqua Velva, which I used on my neck and just covered myself in it. Yeah, I talked to Michael Knowles. Have you not watched the video, Jade Learn? Yeah. <laughs> As Trump gets older, do you think they'll have to start calling it CPAP instead? No, I doubt it. Ugh. How much CPAC money is fundraising? Uh, question unclear. Do you mean how much money is raised at CPAC or how much money that goes to putting on CPAC as fundraising? Because I imagine a lot, because most of their sponsors, they're, they were scraping the fucking bottom of the barrel with the sponsors. What did I see or not see that surprised me the most? Nazis? Like actually seeing the dumbass like Ryan San Sanchez and his shitty envoy like just walking around. I was very surprising. Um, the amount of dudes on Grinder was actually surprising to me. Uh, the balance board, the like, the vibrating exercise board was very shitty. <laughs> if I'm being real, it was very, um, like, I, I couldn't believe, I was just like, are we, this is really what, okay, fine. Uh, Gabriel, thank you for super chatting $5. Have you seen the new Hannah Gadsby Netflix showcase? I have not. Comments I've seen about it are so fucking mad about it. Yeah, people fucking hate Hannah Gadsby and I don't get it. Um, like, her last special, Nanette, was really... Wasn't Nanette her last special? Nanette was very good. It's a very odd duck. It's not a traditional comedy special. Um, but I appreciate that. I, I appreciate it when a comedian is able to try and expand their art form a little bit. And I think it's way more interesting than whatever the fuck, you know, like Dave Chappelle is trying to do. Um, because you get to a certain point in comedy where... For a lot of people, they get very reflective. And you see this after like a massive special or years and years of big specials. 
where comedians like they might start feeling a little bit burnout. They want to try doing something else and they or, you know, things change in their life. They've had kids. They've they've gotten into and out of relationships. They've matured and grown up and they want their work to reflect that, which is all well and good. Um, And I think Nanette was a really good special from Hannah Gatsby that like really showed a lot of maturity, uh, even if it was not like the regular kind of comedy that people might like. It was very dry um, on purpose, but also very masterful, very well done, like in a a great like kind of a cross between a comedy show and a TED talk, but like completely worth watching. I found it to be very affecting. Um. Tubian 323, is this joke transphobic? I use women's bathrooms even though I'm technically male, but I identify as a pervert. Yeah, I would say. Like, like I get what you're I get what you're going for, but that is that is just like that is just saying for most people they're going to hear I identify as a trans woman. Or trans women are perverts when you say that. Like that's I I would I would revise that. That's just that's just my two cents. Um, that's that's part of why you have to be super specific with what you're saying is that the best jokes don't leave room for interpretation. Like you can you can lead viewers or lead your audience to a joke, but you don't want them not knowing what the punchline is necessarily um but yeah no hannah gatsby is one of the in my in my um the the comedy videos i've done hannah gatsby has been a constant like i will i'll shit on you know glinner or uh fucking roseanne Barr's comedy special and people will be like oh yeah well what about how bad hannah gatsby is and i'm like what? Stop it. Shut up. Why are you talking about it? <sighs> Bye, Crocter Gambles. Oh, wait, no. Chat name for chat. Go have fun fishing. Chat name for chat. Thank you very much. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay, Burner 10. I think they were asking how much of CPAC was spent trying to fundraise for campaigns and stuff. Probably a decent amount, I'd say. Like, there's there's probably a good amount. Like, there was definitely a lot of, you know, this person for Congress, this person for Senate. Um, I don't know how effective that was. Like, I, I didn't see a lot of people, like, pulling out their checkbooks to write, like, checks on the show floor, you know? Oh yeah, Lane Kaplan, the Reagan dinner is probably 300 bucks fundraising because dinner's like that. Yeah, I fully, I fully felt that. That the Reagan dinner was just, um, why am I not, oh fuck, I'm not able to see, all right, give me a second. Let me pull up YouTube chat because it just occurred to me, I'm not seeing YouTube chat. Okay. Canola Oil, who was this event for? Was it just big wigs trying to network or was it for the average voter? Um, I think it was for big wigs to make money off of the average voter. Like the, the average person who was going there, like I said, it's not for them to really gain anything for it. Like it, it, it was just reaffirming their biases, making them feel comfortable around like my, excuse me, like-minded people. Um, yeah. (laughs) 
Yeah, I don't know why I'm not getting all of these. Did they serve cocaine at the CPAC dinner? I wouldn't be surprised if they did. Did I have any good interactions? You know, hard to say. Interpretive dance painter, your thoughts. Um, a very talented painter, I guess. Like she was, she was looking like she she was very talented i'll say that um like it was just so strange to see i guess when unbeliever what do you think got the dance party started boredom like i said it was it was like i said in the video it was 45 minutes after trump was supposed to be taking the stage and like so, a big guy just literally just started dancing uninhibited it was very biz like so bizarre All right, sorry. Okay, I'm, I'm on YouTube. I'm scrolling through to see some chat. I don't know why, but it started not showing it on my multi-stream feed, so I am sorry, YouTube chat. I've been ignoring you. Uh, Toby Fletcher, what are you going to do with the fake online presence you created for CPAC? I'll probably leave it up for a little while. See if I can... Um, if it gets forgotten, I can always rename it. Like, I can always change my handle, change my name, and... Just if I need to do another undercover operation, I already have 200 something followers and I can go through and delete everything. And just that way I have followers to start with. So I'll just probably keep it for now. Um, but yeah, I don't really have a, a need to like delete it, delete it. Dark Alaska 4711. Thank you for following. And Samara Wood, thank you for subscribing. Uh, Zoller Hust, if you got a large amount of funding, are there any specific projects you'd be interested in doing? Games, original movies, or maybe organizing events or something? Movies. I have, I have, I have at least three script ideas that if somebody signed tomorrow, I could have written in a couple months and ready to go. Like at least three. Um, my plan is to finish working this month. <laughs> on some very big videos or on on i have one more big video planned for the month if i can get through it and um after that i'm going to try and take april off and just work on uh completely tearing apart my novel from last year finishing that and then hopefully finishing a script and those are those are like my two big things I want to get sold and published this year. Um, but yes, Altered Ren, thank you very much for raiding. Hello, raiders. A crab rangoon in these trying times. Hello, everybody. All right. Yes. Sorry. I am. I am looking. Do, 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 banana, banana, banana. Oh my gosh, there's so many more people. Okay, banana brains. There we go. How much did you struggle to edit the CPAC and Hatred videos with regards to your character voice? I'm cis and hate my voice, so I can't imagine being trans and masking and editing. It's not so bad. Um, like, I, I definitely don't like the way I sound. I definitely don't talk like that day to day. But it is... Like I view it as I'm I'm playing a character, you know. Like it's 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 like if I were to put on a voice for a goofy character on here. Like if I, when I do my Solid Snake voice or my Alex Jones voice for the chat, like like I can I can listen back to that stuff and it doesn't really bug me because it's I it, that's not me, you know. If if that makes sense. Um, Hoot Wheels, thank you for subbing with Tier One. No, I love, um, somebody said in the YouTube chat, Demon Mama has film experience too. There's a lot of queer people in the space I'd like to work with. 
I would like to work with, um, oh, uh, Mia Moore and Bugs Matrix and Jesse, Jesse Gender. Um, just a lot of like very talented up and coming queer people in the, uh, just in the like film space and trying to um, get more into film. And that's, that's really what I want to do is I want to make micro, like I want to start with like micro budget surreal horror. Like that, that is my, that's, I mean, that's my wheelhouse. That's what I came out making when I was making video games. That's what I was making. Everybody here knows I made games, right? For a long time. Dream YouTube collab. I don't know. Um, a, a lot of my faves aren't like big channels. Like I'm, I'm like, there's a, there's a high chance in the future that I will probably be doing something with Kaylin. Um, we've talked about doing something. Uh, Fundy Fridays and I have talked about doing something. Um, Savvy and I have some other stuff in the works. We've Savvy writes books. And like, these are people that I've, I've looked up to for years. They're, they're, great uh hoot wheels oh games what engine did you use i well when i was working professionally on a game that was not mine um it was unity right now the game that i'm writing for even though i don't i don't implement any of the writing but um the game i'm writing for is all in unreal engine 5 wait maybe it's ue4 i think it's Four, because it's been it started on four, um, and yeah, no, I give me a uno momento. You know, here's here is one game I made. Um, and I worked on this on and off. I was, all right. I worked on this on and off for like, goddamn two years. And, um, and it's free to download if anybody has itch. And it is, that's a couple hours. It's like two hours long, but, um, yeah, I worked on it on and off for about two years. And it's in a little, like, it's an RPG maker kind of knockoff engine, but it allows for a really good um, basic 3D rendering with sprites, which is the exact aesthetic I was looking for. Let me go to, here's my game, and I will turn off chat box real quick. You can actually, see if we can watch the trailer. All right, just go watch on YouTube. All right, sorry, YouTube, I am not. What is my dev skill set? Um, limited. Yeah, I, can you guys hear this? Or is it, no, it's not, All right, there we go. Yeah, I miss, god damn, I love games.
Like I just I loved making the sprite art so much and making the I'm a big fan of like urban decay and industrial settings. I loved making all the art and all the characters so much. Skinned Mike, my, my big homie, Skinned Mike. All my homies love Skinned Mike. Damn, I kind of cooked on some of the art design here. Shit. No, this was in um, Smile Game Builder. Smile Game Builder. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I miss I miss making games. I've had plans for um, not a follow up, but I've had plans for a visual novel for. Oh God, I was going to start writing it right after, right when I got let go of my KHQ job. And then I put that on hold and it's just been on hiatus for like three years. Okay, Squid Pope, have a good night. Oh yeah, I love Scumhead stuff. Yeah, I know Scumhead for sure. Um, and then if anybody wants to actually know more about the game, you can go to um, DreadXP did a um, a like write up review on it that I was so I still I read this every now and again and I'm so proud of it. Um, but yeah, DreadXP did a write-up review on the game and uh, we're very positive with it. And I, I'm, yeah. So like this is, this is the relative level of surrealism and horror and um, symbolism and just style that I want to work in. And I, I have that to transfer to film and games and books. I have a book that I've written most of. And so my, um, my goal for the end of the year is to get through, finish my book and finish a, a script, if not two, and start looking to actually getting funding. I think your next project should be taking a nap. That sounds great, actually. I am so EP. I'm I'm just the EPiest bean. Uh, Jennifer N, are you still battling COVID? No, I'm good. I am feeling I am feeling much better. If I sound a little sniffly, it's just because I've been talking for a couple hours now. Um. Have a good night, Rubber Freak. Tired? There's a nap for that. Oh yeah, planar work. I love playing around with 2D and 3D. I was for a long time I was um prototyping a game. Cause I've I've always like literally ever since I was a kid, which is why I went with that style to do some background to the game, but I've loved the 2D sprite art in a 3D setting. And, and to me, that reminds me of being a kid. That reminds me of Doom and um, just Wolfenstein and the games I used to play on my Game Boy Advance. And so that's the style I, I really wanted. And I had worked on, for a little while I was working on, but I could not get the fucking things to work for the life of me, um, in a adventure game engine that I was promised would be super easy because what it, what it purported to do 
And this was the the original pitch pitch. I never pitched it. I only ever put it on itch.io. But the original design for to dawn and back was pre-rendered backgrounds and then similar styled characters in the foreground. And it was still a very similar art style. But I couldn't get the adventure game engine to work. And I found this like pseudo 3D uh, RPG maker knockoff and I couldn't customize the, the things at all. One day, if I ever have a studio or I ever have people to do it for me, I would love to just say, go remake it and make it the game I want it to be. Um, because I had a hell of a time. So the thing about To Dawn and Back is that every playthrough might be different because there are... It is inspired by a time when I was playing a lot of immersive sims, so Deus Ex, uh, Dishonored, but a lot of stuff about it, the things that change in the playthrough can be the story, but they are also every day you have your you have dreams. And the dreams are drastically different depending on the choices you've made. But not in a way that was ever really, the thing that I wanted to make unique about it is that the dreams are not different in a way that is telegraphed to the player. So you do not have choices during the day that will be like, you know, if you choose this, you'll have good dream. If you choose this, you'll have bad dream. It is completely, it's not random, but the things I chose to hinge those dreams on may or may not be completely inconsequential to the player. They are based on talking to certain people or not talking to certain people. They are based on, do you choose this over this? And then that item may or may not show up in your dream. Um, and so like stuff like that is how I wanted to really just make it a uniquely replayable thing. So anyway, if you, if anybody wants to go play it, it's out there. Um, Hypno, good night. Start Savvy's new vid. Oh my gosh, Hypno Amber. It is so, it's so, it's so good. So long, so long. Goodness gracious. Um, using the doll, Sarah the Sarah. Too bad Savvy won't collaborate on a horror game with you. Using the dolls mixed medium can be so jarring and spooky when done right. I had a, for, actually I had, um, I wonder if I still have, there's no way. I think I threw them away. There was a point at which, right around the time I was getting done with that game, I wanted to do a game... What was I going to do with the dolls? I want to say I was going to... I had bought some dolls at some point to turn into assets for a game. I don't remember what I was going to do with them. But I do remember buying dolls from a thrift store because I was going to melt them together and take pictures of them. Um, and then put that into a game somehow. Yeah, Crocter Gambles. I got a day free tomorrow. I think I'll watch Savvy's vid. Uh, but gosh, girl. It's so, it's so long. I'm only halfway through it. What was I going to do with them? Um... You underscore just on YouTube. You're someone who creates videos, does comedy, creates games and movies. Do you think that there's a type of person who is more predisposed or do you think anyone can do that? Uh, mentally ill. No, um, I'm just neurodivergent. And my 80, I've, I've always been creative. And I've, I just, I want to make shit. Like I've, I, I just have ideas that I need to bring into fruition. Like constantly, I constantly have ideas. I've had I've had ideas for story, like new stories, in the last couple of days. And this makes this makes actually focusing on a story and focusing on bringing one project into fruition a real bitch. Like I have to really love it because I have so many ideas that just go on the back burner because they might be low key bangers, but I don't have time to invest in them when I need to bring other things to fruition. Um, yeah, I think art should be funded by the government. The Steve guy. any good translate you would recommend yes closest i could find with ursula Le Guin. um i recommend it's it's kind of a rough read i don't remember who it's by but it's a book called i'm trying to see if i have it right on my shelf i can't find it um 
it's called Transgender History. That is a phenomenal read. Um, if you haven't read it yet, I think Gender Queer by Maya Kababe is quite good. Um, other than that, I don't read as much as I'd like. I've been trying to get back into, I have a bunch of audiobooks I'm, I'm getting back into soon. Now that I am done needing to spend all of my audio time on research for stuff, um, I can, for a little bit at least. Um, Planar Walk, let Emma Thorne know you want that. Planar Walk on YouTube saying you could also collab with Emma Thorne. Yeah, I love Emma Thorne's stuff. And Emma, I mean, Emma has collabs with Savvy before, so there's like one point of separation between us now. Um, but no, I love, I have watched, Emma is another creator I've looked up to for a really long time. And I think that our content and our, like our general styles and vibes overlap enough. I think it would be super fun. And they've always seemed so incredibly sweet and cool. And I love Emma because she seems so like unassuming, but she also doesn't take shit from people. And that, like, it's such a, a vibe. It's such a fucking serve. I love that. When is an ASMR video going to happen? I don't know if ever. I've thought about doing some for, like, OnlyFans. Um, because Autumn Ivy does some good ASMR stuff. But I don't... I don't know. Would you want to do something with ContraPoint? Yeah. Like, yeah, what... <laughs> That's such a weird, like, here's the thing. If Hassan or Natalie came to my email and were like, hey, I like your stuff. Do you want to collab on something? Which they wouldn't. They don't need me. Um, but, like, yeah, I would do that. That would be a massive boost for me. I would be, I would be silly not to. Like, just looking at it as a, like, a purely transactional business thing. Like, totally. Yeah, 100%. And I, I don't think they would because they're both... Um, like, they, they both do mostly solo content. Unless Hassan wanted to have me on, like, a stream or something. Uh, like a trans something. <clears throat> no, you can't have my real information on YouTube. Thought Slime's video on the Turner Diaries is a banger. I forgot to recommend Turner Diaries. I, not recommend Turner Diaries. I forgot to recommend Thought Slime's video on Turner Diaries um, because it is a, a like really great video. Really great video. Um, that is um, like really good at understanding why why it has had such lasting appeal in shitbag online racist circles. Um, Crocter Gambles, how many teas did you buy, streamer squints? I bought two. I like tea. I like my bubble tea. No, I don't think anybody clocked me. Canola oil. I could totally spam your videos in his chat. Don't don't bother anybody. Don't break any rules for me. Um, it's a good video. I know TS is a polarizing video. I I don't understand why Thought Slime is polarizing for some people. Like I've I've never seen Mildred be anything but like pretty correct. Uh, I think I think too often in leftist spaces, people get canceled or put on the outs for a cringe opinion or two but like like the the good they do far outweighs the bad and it's not like he's out here excuse me um i was thinking about why was i thinking about hassan who are we talking about
You're talking about spamming? Why? What just happened? Meldred. Fuck, right, we were talking- God! That was bizarre. My brain just went blank, chat. Huh. That was really weird. Um... What was I saying about that line? Find themselves over rhetoric over okay right irish dc yes okay yeah no what i was saying is that like you know what i think thought slime gets lumped into a weird zone with like peter coffin for some reason where people will like chalk them up to being shitty in one way or another that I don't think is deserved. Whereas Peter Coffin is absolutely deserved. Um, Peter Coffin and who's, who's, uh, God, who's, who's Burger King? Who's that guy? That's on the tip of my tongue. Do I know about Peter Coffin's special talent? Uh, making up girlfriends? Yeah, Caleb Maupin. That, that's the one. Um, I love how everybody knew knew Caleb Mompin off of Burger King. Um, <laughs> and no, and yeah, the Crocter Gamble's like I've I don't understand why Thought Slime. I every time I try and think of something they've said, or every time I've seen people be mad at them, it's been over something that I just look at and I'm like, come on, really? We're gonna we're gonna cancel somebody over this? It's like the same thing with, um, like, look, there's plenty you can criticize Keffels about. The idea that Keffels is racist and, le like, legitimately racist over the noodles thing is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Like, there are, there are other cringe things she's done that are very optically bad. But the noodles thing is is like a real... It's a dumb thing on her part because she just kept doing it and kept leaning into it. But... Like, also, literally... Like, calling her bad for praising a book about noodles. About the, the white woman ate noodles book. You know, like, there's... Dr. Robotnik, there's other shit you can criticize her for, for sure. But like, it, it 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 just it reminds me of that. It it just it reminds me of that. Like there there are valid things to criticize people for. You don't need to make things up to be mad at, or you don't need to be performatively mad at things that are like just not that not worth getting mad at. Uh, is is my point with that? Especially when there's valid shit to get mad at. Yeah, Crocter Gamble. Well. I still see that shit being passed around, though. Yeah. See, Phoebe makes people on YouTube saying, for whatever reason, I thought Thought Slime and Peter Coffin were the same person. Yeah, and well, and see, I don't even know what happened with um. I still don't know what happened with the Zan sex cult thing. I do. Okay, now I remember that. Damn, really, Drax's storm skill. I didn't know Mildred took down the videos with Sophie. See, that's like a fuck. That's a stand up thing to do. Like to me, that. That shows a lot of fortitude. Like somebody who's your friend has shit come out. Like somebody who is your friend who you've collabed with multiple times and known for years has shit come out about them and you publicly sever ties like that. 
Like that's 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 good shit to me. Uh, Sophie from Mars was a um is I guess does Sophie still make? I I haven't seen her make anything. I think she's just been taking time to herself, which is good. But um, she had I I don't. I don't want to speak on it with 100% certainty, but she had, um, yeah, John Braybridge, I'm good. I just had a weird brain moment where I, I, I was talking about Mildred and I saw somebody talking about Hassan and I don't remember what I was thinking and it just, I don't, I don't remember what was happening, but I'm fine. Um, no, Sophie, um, allegations came out that Sophie had physically abused and pressured and coerced her partners or pri previous partners um, from, from my recollection. I, that is, I read up on it. Um, yeah, Drax's storm scale. Sophie from Mars is a prominent leftist YouTuber. A group of her exes came forward with allegations of physical abuse. Yeah, and it was a group of people that confirmed that allegations had happened. So, like, when you have a group of people and they are providing evidence, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to say anything against it. And here's the thing. Oh no, my name, Jennifer N. So is dead domain's name Emma. No, I'm, uh, my name is Jordan. Um, Emma, Emma Thorne is who we were talking about. Emma Thorne is a great creator, uh, on YouTube. Um, Maddie A, hi from a trans Ohioan. Hello. Yo, how long you been going for? Um, about three hours, nine minutes. Yeah. And the, so the stuff with Sophie is she came out and the stuff with Sophie has been a bummer for me almost as much as, well, about as much as a bummer as the stuff with Hannah Reloaded was. But, um, yeah, Drax's Storm Scale. Sophie came out and some people had an issue with the way that she phrased her, like, public apology slash acknowledgement of the abuse because she did come out and say that she was sorry and basically admitted these things happened. I think some people were mad that she was so, she may have been a little bit more dismissive with the allegations and stuff than I think they wanted. That's, you know, that's, that's in the eye of the beholder, honestly. Like that's, that's going to differ from person to person. Um, and yeah, I go by Jordan for now. I've been thinking of changing the name. No, Jacob, I was born Jordan. Um, I was just, yeah, so really, in my my gender ambiguity is my mom's fault. <laughs> I was like, you you chose this for me. Um, Chaotic Kitten, what stuff with Hannah Reloaded? Oh. Uh, it's, it's not like my play, like you can go check it um, from, um, uh, actual Jake's channel because actual Jake and his partner Sarah did multiple streams discussing it when they very publicly um, cut ties with Hannah over Hannah's behavior that consisted of repeatedly pushing Jake's boundaries um, sexually and essentially like essentially assaulting him. Like not, it's hard, it's hard to describe because it is, it is assault, but it is not as serious, well, not as ser serious isn't the right word. It isn't as, like, grievous as that term conjures to mind, but it is essentially that Hannah did not take no for an answer repeatedly and continued to try and approach Jake um, in a relationship 
capacity. Um, yeah, chaotic kitten. She violated boundaries repeatedly, 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 repeatedly. Um, harassment. That's the word. Good word. Magic City murals. That is, that is exactly what. Um, uh, harassment and violating boundaries is the is the best way to put it. Sexual harassment. And yeah, it's, it's so, and it's, it's a rough stream. Um, I would go watch it though, because they provide so, so many receipts. And, and that is heartbreaking for me because, um, like Hannah and Jake were really, both really big parts of me not only coming to terms with who I was after my divorce, but also getting more into a leftist space on YouTube. Um, so that's been, that's been a bummer for me. Um, Lay Shroom, Lail Shroom, did you have to do anything else to get rid of that persona beyond burning the gross clothes that you ordered the con? Uh, no, I, I, I got home and I was pretty, like ready to break out of that. Uh, and I mean, like my, my partners, it's so it's kind of funny because I do tease my partners because they hate my Keith voice because it's so like it's, it's grating to them because um, they, they just don't see me as like that straight white masculine. Like they just don't see me as that um, like caricature at all so it's it's like a very annoying voice for them um so i still pull that out every now and again to kind of make their skin crawl because i find i find mischief funny Shit post palm the cpac video was a big wake-up call to me i'm trans and i've been avoiding political content for a while i think i'm going to have to get back into it i appreciate that I would recommend um, if you are trans and looking to get back into politics, I would recommend my video on PragerU and their anti-trans propaganda. Um, I think there's a lot of valuable information on there. And then, of course, I source everything down in the um, the comments of my videos. So if you're if you are looking for something that is, um, what did I say? That's dirty streamer. They did nothing wrong. I forgot. I already forgot what I said, honestly. The voice paired with shit like Bidenflation. I legit forgot who I was watching. Yeah, it was. Somebody somebody in here earlier called me a, uh, a shapeshifter, and I, I wear that badge with pride. Aw, oh, Sky a Desert Cat. Thank you very much for the $2. Hive Psy, what's up with Hive Psy? I have divorce court next week. Yeah, I need to get up in my divorce court. Um, and thank you very much, Jennifer N. Th I think thank you, Ryan Green. Um... Yeah, Sky a Desert Cat. It's it's some shit, isn't it? Project 2025 is some shit. I think it is Oh yeah, there's that was just the uh the police rolling by. But um Yeah, I think one of the next streams I want to do this month is a real deep dive. I need to go and find a lot of good sources that cite a lot of it because I want to go through and really dig into Project 2025. Um, deeper than I was able to in the video. It would probably be like a three or four hour stream and I would put up a highlight of it. But I would want to do what they plan to do for LGBTQ law, what they plan to do for immigrants, what they plan to do um, against diversity just in general, uh, taxes, the lawfare they plan to enact, um, abortion, women's rights, voting rights, like everything is going to be touched by it if, if Trump is is allowed in. So I really want to make sure I, I am able to, to talk about that as much as possible. 
uh, and that that needs a dedicated dedicated stream into the abyss thank you very much have a good night everyone and stay safe you too Jennifer N. Project 25 is bleeding into Canada, uh, too, and I'm terrified so much. Like, I don't want my best friend's existence to be illegal and for me to be forced to be celibate or a trophy wife of a chubby chaser. I, I don't know if you'd be forced to be a wife, but, like, it's so... It's fucking bleak. Like, like the, the things it portends... Like, like, if you look at the countries that have followed Trump's leadership already places like argentina brazil uh it hasn't gone well like they they've elected these quote-unquote populist far-right nationalist fascists hungary yeah hungary with victor orban i would arguably say israel because of how far-right and nationalist netanyahu is and literally no good has come of it no country with these self-styled far-right figureheads is doing well. So what does it portend if the next step something like Trump does lays out these radical changes and everybody else, all those dumbasses want to follow suit too? Hive site. No, we have not touched, discussed the UK bans for puberty blockers for Myers. We we've only been doing uh, this has pretty much just been a, a Q and I, and I think I think we'll probably just keep it at that. Um, I'm getting pretty tired. I will kind of want to wrap up soon. But um, Avery J saying should we be like making plans for the worst right now? I don't want to spread fear where it's not necessary, and I like. You know, there's no, no good comes from yelling fire in a crowded theater. You know, like, like there, it's not a good thing to catastrophize and to only, uh, prepare for a worst case scenario. Yeah. Zoller Hust is, that's a good plan for the worst, hope for the best. Like, like I would recommend everybody trans, cis, like I was talking about earlier, get firearm training if not a gun if if you and i don't advocate everybody have gun because some people are not in a mental place where that's good like if if you do not think you can handle having a gun don't but you should know somebody who does you should know somebody who is trained you should have a passport you should take basic self-defense classes so that if you if you need to resist somebody in close proximity, and this isn't for I'm I'm not saying this is for you know putting together a, a, a trans or a leftist militia. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the ability to keep yourself safe. Because if Trump comes to power, if people feel vindicated in doing the same thing we saw last time he was president, where attacks, open attacks, hate crimes against minorities skyrocketed immediately. That is going to be so much worse this time. And so much worse specifically, like like think in the last eight years, think of how much the tide has turned on things like great replacement theory. The things that drove the Christchurch shooter, the mosque shooter, Dylan Roof. Those fears about white men being replaced. It's gone from being shit that was just on 4chan to stuff that Elon Musk is now spreading on Twitter. That shit is becoming mainstream conservative thought in a way that it wasn't before. So you have to take that into account. You have to take the climate of things into account. It's not just about queer people or minorities. It's about everybody. Because we are all going to be equally susceptible to violence now with the, the culture wars that have been waged against us and, and are continual and continually being waged. Um, yeah, Zoller Hust, that is a great, that, that is, I was just getting to that is 
logistics and medical knowledge are also super important to know if you aren't comfy with firearms and combat training i think too even if you can try to find friends in nearby states i could possibly swing by and get you out of that state is good yeah exactly yeah it's it is like you want to keep yourself safe and keep other people safe and you want to form up with your community so that they can also keep you safe um and that is that is what i would prepare for is the ability to protect others and have yourself protected because that that is really the only way together we all get through that shit it's like no i the idea of these like lone badass gunmen like who are gonna just sweep the street like that's that's conservative paranoia bullshit the the tool of the enemy we do not need it we will not use it unbeliever do you think trump will win i don't fucking know honestly i don't know and that's the scary shit is i i would you know in a functional fucking democracy in a functional world you'd be able to look at trump and be like no he won't win like legally he can't right he's on trial for federal charges if he's president he's just going to override it why 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 would he be able to win but um we live in hell world so fuck i don't know man um a few seconds awesome kid th has resubscribed tier one for four months thank you very much uh young adult trans i'm here i love your content i think the seatback infiltration was so fucking based thank you i don't know how you have the ability to handle all that bs oh years of practice keep doing the amazing work in journalism you have been more people need to know this has certainly helped open my eyes going to be going to florida tomorrow for a class trip oh, wish me luck good luck awesome kid stay safe please stay safe um yeah and brutus magnuson attacking first is bad optics a shade dragon getting good with beard and prosthetics i don't know how many more undercover things i'll do like honestly it's like i'm I'm trying to think of like what else unless it was getting in with an actual conservative organization like like if i could get in with like info wars trans person infiltrates info wars no um Hmm. All right for a convention. Yeah, I am mute. Those are those are very good points. Uh, if you aren't comfortable owning a gun, is getting training or find someone that will let you practice and train with them. Uh, and I would say medical medical knowledge and medical training is is the biggest thing. DF, thank you very much for super chatting ten bucks. Canola oil, thank you for subscribing to your one. And Larry Fishman, a super chat, five dollars. Keith struck me as a trans femme egg about six months from hatching and starting HRT. <laughs> what a coincidence. Um Yeah, it's I would say building a community. Building a community and finding out how to stay safe is the most important thing. Like that just is like find make sure you are caring for everybody else because in in the hardest times that is what we need we need people who are not going to run away people who will take care of who needs taking care of shiny next thank you for subscribing at tier one because i i do think it's going to get bleak like i really unfortunately do um it's it's gonna be a year ahead like it really is and uh yeah i'm so i, I am taking a little bit of like a mental health break because i have a feeling that once once basically july hits and and trump is already like he's the presumptive nominee which just sucks but like once summer hits, the campaigns are really going to start kicking into high gear, and I have no fucking idea what's going to happen. 
and um, the best thing you can do is stay ready. Excuse me, stay ready. Like the the song says, if you stay ready, you don't gotta get ready. Yep, Shade Dragon, that's another thing. I also suggest a basic legal literacy in addition to first aid and arms training, particularly around getting arrested. Go watch those those videos on TikTok of the lawyers that just tell you to shut the fuck up. Like when you get arrested and the cops ask you, shut the fuck up. I want to talk to a lawyer. Shut the fuck up. Like if you were at a protest and you get arrested, shut the fuck up. What do you do? Shut the fuck up. Like, nothing else. Nothing else. Um, yeah, right to silence is a duty, not a right. Yeah, you, you have... do Like, that is another really great point, is that you have a right to know your rights, and you have a right to exercise those. Like, it's, it's literally the first one. You have a right to remain silent. Like, you, you have a right to just not say anything. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Then don't, don't fucking say anything. Uh, yeah, Lynx, that's a good... That's a good tip. Use a pin and not biometrics to lock your phone. That's solid, yeah. Iclonus, where all the arteries are close together and easy to hit multiple times. Uh, yeah, no, again, basic medical knowledge is super important. Knowing how to staunch blood flow, knowing how to apply antiseptic, knowing how to apply bandages, and I would say even knowing how to cauterize properly, knowing how to detect internal bleeding. Because I think there's probably, I don't, I don't know what's going to kick it off. Um... Might be another police shooting. It might be Trump doing something. But there are going to be, at some point, there are going to be riots. Not riots. I hope not riots. There are going to be protests. And if you go to a protest, which you should, it is your civic duty to go and support your fellow person at a protest. It is, it is, dog, what do you, I hope you can all hear that. What are you doing? Hey, ding dong. Slurp, slurp, slurp. Um, yeah, Aaron Social, that's another great point. 90% of the time you see an American holding a gun, they don't have any trigger discipline. See a snoot. Well, that's, that's her little ear. That's her little ear. But yeah, no, it's been uh, dog noise as ASMR. Yeah, now you've got your ASMR. Uh, AK Psyche, I know how to do CPR, but that doesn't seem as combat related. S still useful. Still useful. Medical training is medical training. Some somebody needs to know how to do CPR. Like somebody can stop breathing. Somebody can take a fucking gas canister to the chest that will stop their heart. The person who knows CPR can always save a life. It's like knowing the Heim. Like, you never know if somebody will need it. Again, the one thing I can say, if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. So get ready. Stay ready. Yeah, if there's protests, try to go. Like, if you, if you have to miss a, a thing at work... If you have to miss somebody's birthday party, go to a protest. Because that the, the numbers are what matter. That's what shows the people in power, people are pissed. And they actually care. Like it is, it is I, I take it seriously when I say protesting is a civic responsibility you have. Shiny Nix 86 I'm medically retired, firefighter, EMT. We usually had free local classes. I'm sure that's common all over. Oh, yeah, it is. It totally is. Yeah, there's, um, like, they might have them at libraries, wherever wherever y'all are. Libraries is a big place. Um, Travis Animation, thank you for following. Eli421, thank you for following. Taco Time, I appreciate the biddies. 
And Night Lord, thank you for following. And Shiny Nix, thank you for subbing at Tier 1. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, Zolar has, that's that's peak. That's Kino. I love the protests where the armed leftists show up to protect the drag performances and the conservatives cower away or would call for literal open Nazis for backup. Yeah, that's like, that's, that's an ideal setting. Like, because that makes conservatives look bad and also dispels the, the notions about leftists being like these pussies and stuff. Hello? Which is, which is all conservative propaganda. At any rally, you're going to have just as many people ready to throw down on a, on a, the leftist side as conservatives. The difference is conservatives just want to shoot people. Like they, they would just rather shoot you than actually throw down. Yep. Y'all talking in the chat about Biden losing the election because of the, because of Palestine. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, that's, Palestine is so terrifying because it seems like the perfect storm for Biden right now in the worst way possible. Um, it really seems like, like of all the fucking things, dude, of all the fucking things, like you had to, had to go and support this. Anyway, I'm going to, let's see who is on right now. Perfect. Jack is online, so we are going to go raid Jack. I have to give my dog some treats. And I am going to go chillax for the rest of the night. Everybody stay on. Because we are going to go say hi to Riverboat Jack. If you haven't followed Riverboat Jack, do it. Go follow them. Jack is awesome. And she is a wonderful leftist streamer. For everybody else, please keep sharing and liking the video. And thank you all so much for everything. And I hope to see you again very shortly. I'll probably do something on Thursday or Friday. Have a great rest of your